Hello and welcome to the Horror Screams podio- podcast. Uh, we're part of the Horror Screams Video Vault Network and this is episode 35 of the podcast. We've been going for over three years now, which is kind of astonishing. And we've, uh, yeah, man, we started in 2019. And so this is like our fourth end of year episode, which is really weird. Um, Yay, go us. Exactly. Yes. And Through the plague the and the plague and everything the, else. The plague, the drought, and now the freeze. Famine, the, <laughs> yeah, the pestilence, pestilence war. Is next. All horsemen yeah. of the apocalypse yeah. have been involved. In I don't think it's our fault, though. I don't think that by starting oh. this podcast, we triggered the end. I mean, we might have done. It feels like we have. <laughs> um, so, yeah, somehow we're all still alive. Uh, now I'm saying that with fingers crossed, obviously. And mm. we're recording this at least, we are alive on this date, which is the 17th of December, and this will go out for Christmas, um, which uh, will definitely be one of many more Christmases that we will all enjoy without any kind of, um, I don't know, nuclear apocalypse or anything. So that's good news. Mm-hmm. Sure of that. Um, yeah, welcome. And uh, it's just the two of us today for episode 35, the end of year kind of informal review that we're going to be doing for this episode for horror in 2022. We had some boys scheduled, some, you know, handsome young men, but they've both had to um, pull out. And so it's just us, Sarah. Welcome, Sarah, the regular co-host. How's it going? It's going good. It's going good. It's Christmas. It's Christmas. Yes. 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 As Noddy Holder once said, it is unbelievable. It's Christmas in eight days. Jeebus. I know. It's coming along really quickly. Actually quite excited this year as well. I feel very Christmassy. That's great. Yeah, same here, actually. It's so close and it's proper frosted here in, yes. in Norfolk in the UK. Right. Yeah, definitely feels like winter. And all the lights are on. We're, you know, mm. we've still got power and everything. It's all good. Yeah, jolly good show. What a year it's been, Sarah. Oh, it really a has. It, stuff. Yeah, so much stuff that I feel like I've probably missed out on quite a lot of it, but did manage to get in a few of some a few good ones. I didn't go to the cinema too much this year though. Probably mm. only about a handful of times. Which yeah. Which is less than usual for me. But you've been in seen loads this year, haven't you? I've seen quite a lot. Yeah, I've I've missed a few things in the cinema like that I in retrospect I wish I'd have maybe made more effort, but um it's not always possible, is it? It's or it's Mm-mm. sometimes you think, well, you know, I could, you know, it's a bit of a drive and or I could just wait for it to be is the, obviously the model has changed for movies nowadays. So many movies mm. have a small window in the cinema or don't even show up in the cinema. Like um, the new Predator film this year was straight to Disney Plus um, and things like that are more common now. But yeah, so I know I was watching Nope not so long ago, maybe last week, I think. Mm. And I kind of wish I'd have seen that on the big screen because there's some Same. proper big visual stuff in it, which I was like, ah, oh, and everyone's saying, yeah, in the cinema it was, you know, kind of super impressive. But yeah, I've seen a bunch and I saw a bunch at Fright Fest, the first Fright Fest I went to since before the old COVID. So that was quite cool. Um, but yeah, there's been a huge, you know, a mind blowing amount of content in horror alone. I mean, the stuff we're looking at today for like the best of 2022 is obviously horror or horror-ish in a couple of cases i suppose yeah but so much content loads of stuff going on indie films hollywood horror movies have been really strong this year i think um loads of really impressive horror movies by female directors that's been a big thing i think this year probably more yeah. than any other year i can think of um loads of horror on tv sarah yes. so much tv series horror. Many, many series. So much stuff. What have you, uh, because I've only seen really a couple, which we'll we'll come to, but what are your, like, TV horror highlights? Do you have, like, a a few TV horror highlights this year? Yeah, well, obviously The Walking Dead. The end of The Walking Dead. Yeah, or the original Walking Dead. It's going to, obviously, it's never never over. There's going to be spin-offs galore, Mm -hmm. I'm sure. But, you know, it was the end of an era. A whole like eleven years of Walking Dead finished. Yeah. Not all that long ago, I think, end of October, November kind of time. Yep. Yeah. Um. It, it was. It was. It. It ended. I don't want to spoil too much for people that haven't. If they are ever going to catch up on it, it ended in a kind of like 
a bit of a cop out as usual, in my opinion. I kind of think it was a little bit airy fairy towards the end, but there was some great moments, some brilliant like Walker hordes and a couple of deaths, but but no, um, they weren't. They didn't dare try and kill off too many of the main characters, probably because they've got all these spin-offs and stuff planned. <laughs> yeah, which was a little bit of a disappointment, but. I think I think they, they did it proud. I, it was it was never going to end as um, strongly as it started. It did you know it's gone downhill over the years, but a lot of people have stuck with it, and I think I think it ended in a in a fair enough way. I'm very much looking forward to the Rick and Michonne spinoff that is going to mm. come out of this. They did a little teaser right at the end of The Walking Dead, and it was just like just just so good to see Rick back. Yep. That's um, cool. I'm trying to think of some of the other series. Dharma came along on Netflix. I never finished it? Dharma. I watched the first you few, never but um, it? no, no, I watched the first few. Um, what I saw was good. I just, I just haven't gone back mm. to it. I mean, it's been well received. Yeah, though. yeah, Very definitely well for 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 a series that I, I, you probably thought the same as me when you like clicked on it. I went, what ten episodes? Holy mm. crap! It's just going to be a lot of padding. But to be fair, it wasn't it wasn't too bad in that respect. Yeah, I yeah, know. I've had some fantastic. I mean, uh, I think it's the Emmy Awards that Evan Peters has been nominated for. Maybe it's Golden Globes oh, that's been fantastic. nominated for Best Actor, which for mm. this kind of thing is, um, I think, it. quite unusual. Yeah, I mm. think that's it. I think awards don't tend to go to grimy, serial no. killer drama type things. Um, and Richard Jenkins is his dad, isn't he? He's he's very good in everything, and I like that he was a big part of it. Molly Ringwald. Um, again, I only saw the first few, but I remember having this conversation with someone saying, was that Molly? Where was Molly Ringwald? And then it dawned on me, ah, Molly Ringwald. Um, but yeah, no, that's, that was a big thing. Hey, um, I didn't see his later series, which I think is called Midnight Club, but this year was also Mike Flanagan's Midnight Mass, which Uh, I really liked. Was that this year? I think so. I may be wrong. I'm sure it was this year, because Blind Manor was last year. Is that the right way? I'm just going to look quickly, look it up. Oh, that's okay. I, I got caught out on a couple of things because I was like, oh, yeah, the sadness <laughs> was out this year. I was like, that's definitely on my list. Well, I looked it up and went, no, no, that was but the Sarah, I had the mm. same. Pro- I had the same problem with the sadness. So I, I would, there was no question the sadness would be on my list as mm. in top, top list. But then I realized, like, although I watched it this year, it's it's kind of, yeah, it it's kind did of last come out news. last year. Yeah, exactly. I'm it's sure. Yeah, it came out on to, um, was it Prime or Netflix or no, I don't think it was on Netflix. Was Shudder? It? Could I have been Shudder. Shudder. Oh yeah, it was yeah. Shudder, wasn't it? Yeah, it came out on Shudder at the beginning of this year. I think it was early February, March or something. I think because I remember reviewing it for my website and stuff. So I'd watched it this year, but I was like, technically, I can't put it on the list because it didn't actually come out this year no midnight yeah. mass was 2021 as well so oh, take it all back. i did i did start watching what was it um the midnight, the club? One is, midnight club i did start watching it but I, uh, that hasn't grabbed me yeah i haven't i'm only haven't a couple of episodes it. in um, yeah it, it i mean his stuff is typically really good but um yeah I, sometimes I it takes I was a massively. while sometimes it takes a while to get into it yeah yeah, no, yeah. There's, there's, that's the thing. It's, it's it's kind of a saturated market, isn't it? There's so much out there. It is massive. Yeah. And then you you do find yourself getting sucked into like series that you remember from years ago and stuff like that. I got sucked yep. into watching the Umbrella Academy. Which oh, I never watched that, but I've heard it. It's yeah. particularly horror at all, but it's a bit monstery. I got sucked into watching that one. I probably could have been you know, watching some good horror stuff, but I but think it's just like, oh, so I've got three seasons to get through. I have to do it all now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But um, is that the one that's by the guy from My Chemical Ray? Yes. Well, it was written. Um, I think the story, I think he did like a, a comic book type thing. And yeah. So that's. Yeah, so that's worth a look, maybe. Well, there's just too much stuff, though, isn't there? I'll never get yeah. around to it. No, just... that is the thing. There's probably better horror stuff out there, but it, it, it's kind of fun. Kind of fun. Do you know what? Um, yeah. oh, uh, do you know what is good? Which I, I'm only, I'm way behind compared to like all the cool kids, but um, 
it's on Apple TV, which we have free for some reason. I think I think my partner has it with her. I don't know. There's about 600 different streaming services. But Apple TV <laughs> has M. Night Shyamalan's show Servant, which oh, he, okay. I don't think he wrote. I think he's a producer. I don't think he has that much creative input into it. But I do like M. Night, actually. I know people have stated him over the years, but I think he's great. Um, and that's that's a really good one. I'm, there's about I think there's a fourth series coming, but I'm on near the end of series one and the good thing for me my tragic attention span is that each episode is half an hour oh I think there's like, about it, like the good old 10. days yeah which really suits me and I, I do think a lot of shows are padded in not not just um number of episodes but you know i mean genuinely although i live with someone that is obsessed with stranger things genuinely there's no reason <laughs> why as, as I do have affection for it too, but there's no reason yeah. why some episodes of that are over two hours long. It's just <laughs> ridiculous. It's just clearly no one's, you know, have you've got here's your money, do whatever the fuck you like. This is making us so much money. We're not going to send in any kind of editor. Indulge yourself. Make yeah. this last episode two and a half hours long. We don't give a fuck because it's making Netflix lots of money. Goodbye. See you in six months. <laughs> clearly. There's no discipline there whatsoever. No, it's I suppose not. I do feel like the more fantasy type shows can get away with it more, though. <laughs> you kind of get you get lost in it. I think that's why I'm I I because I was obsessed with Game of Thrones and all oh, yeah. that kind of stuff. So I could quite happily sit and watch their episodes for like what are they like forty five minutes to an hour. Yeah, but anything else? I see anything else like that that isn't fantasy based i'm like what do you expect me to sit and watch it for this long <laughs> it's insane um but seven yeah seven half an hour episodes and and it's really creepy i mean it, it, despite half an hour episodes i mean it's not like action action biff bam batman from the 60s i don't know what that's about um <laughs> it's it's a it's a creepy really slow more. burn and <laughs> it, mm. it, it's but it's really effective and somehow because it's half an hour it's it's really gripping and it's um in short yeah. um it's a couple they're not particularly sympathetic which i think is a good thing in in this case because they're not meant to be and the woman is played by lauren ambrose who i loved back in the day when she was in six feet under the tv series from the Mm. early 2000s one of my favorite shows of all time she was the daughter she was like a teenager then and uh, they've lost a child and the whole premise is based on the idea that she's had a total breakdown because of that event and in the place of the the child they have a basically high tech kind of lifelike doll thing that for all intents and purposes to her is still her child. So the husband is playing along with it to try and get her over this kind of mental breakdown. But ultimately she's nursing and looking after a doll. And But at one point the doll seems to become real somehow and it coincides with them getting a nanny to look after the doll stroke baby but mm-hmm. and, this, and it goes on from there but it's extremely creepy it's very quiet no jump scares it's got rupert grint uh oh, is, I like him. yeah and he's very good i mean um he's uh he's her brother their brother brother-in-law yeah brother um so he's a he's a kind of secondary presence and again he's not a particularly sympathetic character but he plays him really well and he's doing mm-hmm. a quite good american accent and there's something about him that that I think works really well for the show too. So I'm kind of into that. I just have to go back to it and, you know, kind of catch up, but that's not so mm. hard to do when there's shorter episodes, but it's a proper, you know, I'm not sure what's going on here. There's hints, uh, you, you maybe think you know where it's going, but then you're like, oh no, it's not going there. But you know that it's leading to something um, really good. And yeah, it's really gripping. Servant on um, Apple TV, it's uh, it's worth a look. Um, for that kind of horror, I suppose, quiet horror, um, mm. psychological horror, I guess. But that was good. Um, yeah. Oh. Any other hey, did series? You, did you catch any of um, uh, Guillermo del Toro's, was it Cabinet of Curiosities? Yes, I watched all of them. Yes. You did watch I have all of finished them, that. Yes. I, what did I you was think of that? Um, I liked it straight, interestingly, the two that I thought were the the letdowns were the two I was most looking forward to, which was the two Lovecraft adaptations. So the um, end, the two at the end? No, that was uh, Dreams in the Witch House. Oh, right. Which was the one, that's the one with Rupert Grint. That had it? Rupert Grint, yeah. Yep. And the other one was the one with uh, Crispin Glover, the um, Pickman's oh, model. Yes. 
oh that was cool i liked that one yeah so I, yeah those two i was i was kind of left cold by those two I especially wasn't too, witch house yeah i wasn't too yeah the, I, I see what you mean about the witch house one there were bits that i thought were great and bits that weren't so great but i think the last episode on cabinet of curiosities was one that i was not keen on the one with andrew lincoln in it yes you see he i was, loved that he was amazing it was just it was just too i don't know it was probably just i don't know people staying in a scary house had a miscarriage hearing babies i just it's like it's been done so many times yeah you see i, I was a, i really loved that i, I liked the last two i think mate because i like well actually the first it opened really strong like the first yeah, three the, the first, first few were awesome the giant rats Brave and, rat, yeah that oh, was yeah it was great the they autopsy the, the one yeah they were really gruesome they were proper yeah proper kind of old school gruesome horror um very much and the period settings were really good as well for those the the bank clerk one as well was great oh the one with the lotion yes yeah that was really good with the horrible kind of clique of women that were all raving about yeah. and that awful what was it it wasn't secret santa was it that awful gift exchange sequence uh everything oh. was so uncomfortable with them because oh, they were so yeah. well, shallow they basically, and... they, it was like a secret santa because they got them they got them all the like same this lotion and stuff wasn't it yeah oh, i thought that was great she was fantastic the the main yeah. character in that absolutely brilliant yes. and yeah I, I really liked that one there was a kind of stepford wives thing going on about that i thought yeah um, and the husband <laughs> I love her husband. Oh, he was lovely. Which was Martin Starr, who's a yeah. really good actor. He's a really good comic actor, but he was such a lovely presence because, and you needed him because he was he was this sort of low key, uh, sort of almost just very ordinary guy just, caught yeah, up in this weird shit. Yeah, really, really nice, nice guy. He's such yeah, a good that actor. Was, that, was, that was one of my favourite episodes. I think I like that too. I love the last two. I I, I do disagree. I, I, it's I I kind of get what you mean, but the the last one with Andrew Lincoln, which was by Jennifer Kent, who is mm. uh, one of my favourite kind of up and coming directors. She did Babadook and um, yes. uh, The Nightingale, which is a harrowing watch. Um, and everything she does is very different. And this is very different to Babadook and Nightingale. Mm. And I am a fan of the, and I think it was set in the 50s, but I am a fan of the um, the kind of quiet ghost stories like this, the, which are yeah. usually based around grief. Um, and I thought this was really well done and, and I thought it was really moving, but I, I kind of get it. I think it's had a mixed. Actually, I think a lot of the episodes have had a real mixed reaction because I like the Peter <clears throat> Weller one as well with the I thought that was fantastic. The trippy 70s. Oh, um, yeah. No, I didn't like that. Which was, I thought that was amazing. I thought, oh, yeah, <laughs> I, I was totally I love the synthy soundtrack and the. Yeah, yeah that was cool. Picture. The trippiness of it. But I was just like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> that can just do something they're all just sat around in a room for ages and nothing really happens until towards the end and then it just goes stupid yeah i was that was that's my least favorite definitely fair enough no i know someone else that hated that too um no that's fair enough um but i mean and do you know what I, it was good though <clears throat> and i mean the show and and do you know what i liked the most out of all of all of the whole of Cabinet of Curiosities is just Guillermo himself, uh, you know, him him at the start with his yeah. with his charming introductions and accent and the lovely little wood carved um, yeah. uh, thingies of the directors. I, I really miss it's very Twilight Zone, you know, where Rod yeah, Serling sure. come on every week. Um, I really miss old, old fashioned anthology show Tales of the Unexpected with Roald Dahl in the 80s. That was mm. another one where you would get you know the producer or one of the creators or whatever turning up just to introduce the shows and i, and I think uh they need to do more of those especially him because he's he's just such a yeah a I'd, I'd like to think thing. and hope that he would come back but i tell you what i did miss this year that i've just had to double check that i hadn't completely missed it is creep show there was no creep show this year oh i'm of so behind series. i only watched the first two series i'm pretty sure ah, yes yeah. okay i thought well, there was got one more reason. to catch up with was there only there's only three altogether three, yeah it, it did uh, looking on it on imdb like right now it says season four should have started 2022 but God nothing damn it. God it hasn't damn it. i miss it hey um shudder uh what was it called yeah 101 best scariest scariest best yeah. horror things yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yep 
So that was quite entertaining. That was that was a, that was cool. Exactly what it said it was really. Um, yeah, but it had some good surprises as well. I was expecting like the conjuring and the nun and all that kind of stuff oh, to be up, nun. you know, in the like top ten and stuff. But luckily, it wasn't. It was quite varied and a couple of them you kind of agree with and a couple of them you're like, oh, my God, I remember that one. And and for me, still like catching up on stuff, I'm like, right, I'm writing that one down. I'm writing that one down, writing that one down. What did I watch off the back of that? I think that's something that you told me I needed to watch as well with the bear. The oh. crazy, like, oh, oh annihilation. That's it, yeah. That's I was terrifying. Like, I love yeah. annihilation. Oh, there was quite a few others that I'd written down. I was like, oh my god, I have to watch that. Oh, the following was that was one of the early ones. It's still one I haven't seen. Oh, or it known or was it? Was it, it, it follows. follows? Wasn't oh. it? it? It follows. Yeah, I've still not seen that. That's on my list. But yeah, I did. I did kind of very... write quite, a f- write quite a few down that I need to watch. But yeah, annihilation, craziness. Oh yeah, Annihilation gave me the proper willies. Um, yeah, I, I was that really was a good pleased show. that they, yeah, they did pick out because the the idea of shows like this is, I, I do think they're kind of beyond criticism because obviously <clears throat> it, it's called 101 whatever you know, scariest mm. things ever, mm. but obviously it's it can't be to everybody. You know, it's, it's no, it, it, there's no way it, it won't be the because everyone's there throwing stuff. At, oh, you bastards! Yeah, you've missed out. This? You what know, this? Yeah. Mrs. Brown's boys or whatever. Um, <laughs> You yeah, motherfucker. Um, yeah, terrifying. Oh, God. I mean, if any, come, someone coming to England for the first time, oh, let's just see what's on TV at Christmas. What oh, God, and that's on. Brown's boy. Well, I, I'm, like, off, I'm off back to the war zone. I'd rather yeah. risk being blown up than sit through what seems Another to be something shat out of the 70s, but not the good end of the 70s. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, uh, but it was nice to see things like Lake Mungo, which I've always yeah. found as one of the scariest things I've ever seen. And ghost watching all those things it follows as another one um but of course entirely subjective so um while while i'm probably too quick sometimes to poo poo um to poo poo uh to poo poo like someone saying oh you know that so and so was scary um well yeah maybe it is to you know i'm sure a lot of people think the things i think are scary totally ridiculous you know as as proven by our difference with the the jennifer kent episode of cabinet of curiosities which mm. I, it's ridiculous i feel embarrassed to say this but i was kind of overwhelmed by that i was sitting there alone at 1 a.m or something because i remember watching the lake <laughs> overcome thinking oh god i'm spooked i'm upset and i can't sleep now and that's ridiculous i know but that you know that just goes to show that the same show or episode can have a very different effect on two you know equally uh equal horror fans in the sense that we both love horror stuff but it's so subjective but you absolutely. are absolutely right. It, it was great. great. It was great hearing, because um, obviously, you know, they have like the directors and stuff come on just to yeah. say, oh, my God, I remember this when I was a kid. Oh, my God, it scared the shit out of me. It was really great, you know, hearing from them, like guys that uh, like the guy that did Gremlins yeah. and stuff was yes. talking about. And then you've got like the more modern directors and stuff, Fede Alvarez and stuff saying mm. what influenced them and what they felt was scary and Obviously, Greg Nicotero was on there because he's on everything and I love him. Anything yep. he finds scary, I'm like, oh, I need to know all about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Tell Greg. me more. Yeah. I love you. He is great, isn't he? Yes. Yeah, no, that was that was good fun. And and those things are, you know, an easy watch for sure. Um, yeah. And another one, I'm not sure if you caught it, also Shudder. And I, I've watched three, three of the four episodes, Queer for Fear. Oh really no, I haven't. Too. Haven't watched that yet. Yeah, that's really good. And potentially, it sounds like it'd be you know, some, uh, <laughs> you know, some kind of um, oh well, you know. But actually, no, it's it's informal. It, it's it's as probably guessable from the title. It's an analysis of various forms and subgenres of horror, including werewolf movies, um, uh, Frankenstein, uh, through a queer perspective. So it has. It has a really engaging bunch of uh, talking heads. This could obviously be a lot of kind of academic wank, but it really isn't because they're so entertaining. You know, it's got all sorts of people and all sorts of uh, personalities involved, including the lovely Brian Fuller, um, oh, cool. who, who 
I always loved. He's wearing the best suit I've ever seen in history. Nice. <laughs> For that alone. He, and does, he's lovely. he does love to dress up. I know. He's so, he's so handsome. So, Don Mancini, you know, all of mm-hmm. these kind of, uh, in some cases, known gay filmmakers that work in horror or producers or writers. Um, in some cases, I'm like, oh, OK. And people like Kimberly Pierce, um, who did Boys Don't Cry. And I think she did the Carrie remake. Uh, yeah, maybe wrong about that. But yeah a real mixed bag of of commentators and they're all really engaging and and it's humorous you know um there's some serious points to be made about um about the werewolf you know uh, from a certain perspective being all about transformation about coming out and all these things that you don't necessarily think about when you're watching them yourself and it goes back to mary shelley and it goes back to you know um famously a gay writers like Oscar Wilde and it travels through to universal horror and things like Silence of the Lambs where you get obviously yeah. potentially now a kind of contentious uh, portrait of what is kind of a trans character in Silence yeah. of the Lambs. So yeah no, that's worth a look because it isn't you know some some of some horror uh, criticism or analysis can be pretentious and kind of um, uh, off-putting for that reason but this is far from it but it's also extremely smart and interesting so yeah quiff of it, it's a great watch Ooh. and brian fuller sarah mm. so i've read is overseeing the uh, crystal lake tv series the um Ooh. the long-awaited kind of resurrection of in this case i think it's a prequel to the friday the 13th movies um which is great because oh the, interesting you know that kind of franchise has been dormant for so long yeah Oh, it's great that he's on board with something like that. That makes that makes me yes. feel a little bit more positive about it. Me too. Yeah, um, uh, ha- we will cover this on the on the series on the show once uh, one time. But Hannibal, which mm. obviously was his bag, is just the best. Um, I can't think really of another horror series that I liked more than Hannibal. Yeah, um, fantastic. And I would go so far, Sarah, to say that it's by far my favourite um, representation of Hannibal Lecter. Completely. absolutely yeah same here i mean the original or first few were we call it kind of went a little bit downhill yeah after that yeah and people had tried to bring it back but i mean uh, brian fuller just he just hit on a bloody winner with like oh, mads mickelson and mads. the the cast that they had to do it it's just perfect yeah totally and it totally transformed it and yeah, but uh, Anthony Hopkins is fantastic, and yeah. and you know, I, I do. But you can around, see Mads but, you Mikkelsen know. as as Hannibal, can't you? Completely, Some of them, because you get used to like one particular person, like Anthony Hopkins or someone playing him. You're kind of like, yeah, that's Hannibal. That's how it's always going to be. You're not really going to take anyone else seriously. Then he comes along, and you're like, oh, hello, okay, I've changed my mind. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and let's face it, we love Anthony Hopkins, but by the time he got to Red Dragon, it all got a bit panto. You know? Yeah. He's behind you! It's mm-hmm. Hannibal! So it all got very, you know, like, you know, and why does he, I mean, it's it's iconic, and it's it's a classic moment, but why does he do that, that whole, it doesn't actually make sense in context, that whole kind of slurpy noise in Silence of the Lambs, you know, a census taker once tried to test me, that whole bit there, that, mm-hmm. that's very panto, you know, that's not really the Hannibal Lecter, why is he in a dungeon, you know, why, what kind of uh, institution glad, in 1990s yeah. America puts their psychopaths in what appears to be a sex dungeon, <laughs> Who's, has there been a health inspection lately? I'm glad Brian Fuller took it to a more kind of contemporary. That's brilliant. Direction. Mm, and sexy Almost, direction, it, Sarah. Yeah, and it was quite. I'm not really a fan of like arty stuff, and I suppose season three is a little bit hard to get through at times. <laughs> but it, it's amazing. It's so well done. Love it, man. Totally love it. Yeah, we will. I really uh, need to. I seriously need, need to rewatch that all. I know. Uh, yeah, yeah. And it was proper gruesome. Like uh, this was a yes. network TV show. You know, it wasn't mm. even a Netflix job. Although I think it ended up on Netflix, or maybe did yeah, for a time. The... Um, but it was made for a network, which you know historically have been very kind of shy about gore and stuff. And this mm. was this was pretty, you know, disturbing, messed up. And extremely violent. I remember the confrontations with um, with with Hannibal and uh, and Will and oh, what's Lawrence Fishburne's character called? Shit. Oh God. He's not Crawford, is he? Is that his name? 
no, it's gone. Not sure. Gone. No. Uh, but yeah, him. <laughs> um, yeah, proper yeah. gory, smashing. Fun. Yeah, nice. Well, yeah, that's definitely one to put on the old rewatch list. Well, before we get on to our best movies of the year, Sarah, what mm. about as it's Christmas? Um, what about a couple of recommendations for festive horror that listeners can go and enjoy over this festive season? Have you got anything in particular? Yes. Well, I watched the 2015 Krampus only today. Ah, I remember seeing that at the cinema when it first came out. Um, and I think I've watched it every year since. But yeah, it's, it's still knocking about. It's still highly recommended, in my opinion. Yep, it's great, isn't it? Um, For some really cute little creepy gingerbread men and crazy Jack in the Boxes and Krampus <laughs> himself, he's he's great. Fantastic. And then you've got people like Tony Collette and stuff in it. <laughs> she's always great. She, I love she's Tony. She's brilliant. Collette. I love her. She's something, isn't she? Um, yeah, Krampus is great. I mean, it, it's it figures maybe that Michael Doherty may, has made one of the all time great Halloween films, Trick or Treat, and one of the all time great Christmas horrors, Christmas films. Krampus, yep, you know, exactly. And and it has that great and, and it has that great Gremlins vibe to it. You know, it, it it's really got the does, same yeah. kind of um, dark humor and playful stuff with the little critters and stuff. Yeah, Krampus is great. Fantastic design as well. And I love yeah. the last shot. That, oh, it's just yeah, it's great. It's, it's that's a that's a that's a very good one. And another good one for me, um, obviously, I've been listening to the soundtrack recently. Is Anna and the Apocalypse? Oh, that's spectacular. It's more of your family type Christmas zombie movie, but it's still <laughs> brilliant. Love it is. Film. It works. That's the thing. It works as a mu- It's a great musical. It's uh, and. It's a low budget movie and it's so ambitious to stage a musical on a low budget, let alone, you know, mm. also working really well as a, at times, quite shocking and, and powerful zombie film that isn't afraid yep. to kill off key characters. You know, yep. it's, I, I think it's, it really should be better known. I think it is, you know, it's got a lot of followers, but I think it really should have crossed over and been one of those things like Shaun of the Dead. Yeah, most which definitely. I, it know, deserves way more credit. She's the whole cast is so they give us and oh and Paul K is the headmaster. <laughs> He's brilliant. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it, that movie was one of the first horror movies I got my daughter into. I think she was about eight when I showed her *Anne the Apocalypse* because I, I was yeah. raving about it all year. I'd seen it at Fright Fest. Yes. In a slightly different version because they they did change it a bit before release. Um, and yeah, no, it's it's really special. I think. Terrific. Yeah, that's two great recommends, Sarah. Any others? Mm. And better watch out. I haven't watched that oh. this year yet, but I keep seeing all the um, you know, friends on Facebook posting up like, oh, Home Alone, watching Home Alone, the only Christmas movie we have to watch. And that makes me think, oh, I really must watch Better Watch Out. Which is better. <laughs> yes. Yeah, which is way better. And and not, you know, and, you know, they're both equally violent, arguably. But yeah, yeah. Better Watch Out does clever things with... Home yes. Alone sequences. Yeah, and, and Home Invasion with the yeah. twist. Very dark. Yeah. It's very oh, sour. Yeah. and You think you know where you are with it, don't you, yeah. for about half the film. And then actually it becomes something quite disturbing about this this adolescent character that you're mm. following. And it gets into dis, kind of discomfort, discomfort with the, the scenes of the girl being uh, tied up. And yeah, that's uh, but still has the paint cans for all Home Alone yes. fans. In yes, a really exactly. unpleasant way. You know? Yeah. Good God. Yeah, that's a great one. Hey, um, we've all we've both seen Christmas, Bloody Christmas, Sarah. We have debuted on Shudder. The new one. Which yeah. is great. That's another on one something? that will will be going on my list now. Seasonal. Yes. You liked it as much as me, I think. I, <laughs> I, I thought I th- it got ridiculously stupid towards the end, but that's what they that's what they do, isn't it? <laughs> I really loved the animatronics as well. Oh, the animatronic yeah. Santa. So, yeah, basically, it's just a premise about a, a, a single girl. She, she's a business owner. She owns her own record shop. Um, her and her 
employee go out to celebrate Christmas with their mates to a toy shop. The toy shops have got these like life size. He's like six foot three, isn't he? This Santa yeah. life size animatronic Santa that basically just gets a screw loose and goes on the wall path and just starts killing everybody. But he's like proper relentless. He's got like laser eyes and all sorts of crazy stuff going on. Um, he does a lot of um, head squashing gets like run over God knows how many times. And he still keeps coming back. It yep. is, like you say, like Terminator on crack. Yeah, totally bonkers. And I don't know why I get a kind of chopping mall vibe out of it as well, but I do. Massively. Yeah, massive chopping mall because, yeah, chopping mall is great as well. The old uh, kind of security guard robots yeah. <laughs> of the 80s malfunctioning. Because I like the idea that in this, it's, it all comes from some bizarre military thing where, oh, well, we could create this. So we have, oh, fuck, you know, who knew it would go wrong? And now we've got this uh, Robo Santa on the loose. That's uh, basically a, a military grade weapon with legs that's going around. Yeah. <laughs> slaughtering Killing people. Killing children and <laughs> children, all yeah. sorts. And what makes it work? Because it's, it's got so much for a low budget film. It's so huge in terms of explosions and gore. And like you said, it keeps moving. It's relentless, like the original Terminator. Mm. And uh, but it's also got, I think, the first half. I was actually quite sad when mm, it happens. But for the first half, it's got this great double act between, like you said, the the girl that runs the shop and and that and the guy, who I think yes. are fantastic. They're a really fabulous kind of crude banter. Yeah, it's great. I love. It both does go them. on for a bit. It's like they could have like cut that down quite a bit because like, it does take a little while to get going. <laughs> and when it does, though, but it, it is a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Oh. Yeah, you don't. You don't begrudge it too much. And and it's got Jeremy Gardner in it. Yes, it does. And Graham Skipper. Yes. Yeah. 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 Jeremy Gardner is not in it as long as for as long as I hoped he would be. I bloody love him. He's great. <laughs> Jeremy Gardner, yeah. Jeremy Gardner is shows up in so many things. Yeah. And, yes. and it's always great fun. He's he's in a film uh that I've just actually forgotten. It'll come back to me. Was it but the yeah, leech or something? Oh the leech, the yes. One the leech. You said about, yeah. The leech is great. He has a big role in that with his real life oh, wife. Um, and yeah. And Graham Skipper is the priest that gradually goes bonkers at Christmas. So the leech is also a, a good Christmas watch. And Jeremy oh. Gardner spends spends the film kind of off his face. Yeah, and indeed, he's, uh, he's and great indeed when he does ones like that. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, uh, the leech is a fantastic. It's a great film, but it's a fantastic showcase for Jeremy Gardner as well. He has a lot more to do than uh, in Christmas, Bloody Christmas. He's fantastic. Yeah, the battery and After Midnight. He is another of those faces that we're seeing a lot, isn't he? It's, um, mm. The kind of faces of modern indie horror, and he's he's great in everything. Um, so that's cool. Do watch Christmas, Bloody Christmas. I just watched um, not long ago. I watched Silent Night which is uh it was released briefly at the cinema last christmas in the uk and came to streaming this year and it's a british offering and i really like silent night i think that's another one that should go on your festive list because it's uh, it's entirely sour um it's a little out of date because at one point it refers to the queen doing her christmas day speech in a bunker and obviously the queen this year selfishly died so that particular joke is no longer valid um <laughs> uh, but the rest of it it's fantastic. I mean, if you didn't know, and I think the trailer was probably suggesting a lighter movie than it is. If you didn't know for about half an hour, you think you're watching like a, a kind of cruder than usual Richard Curtis uh, British comedy with posh people having a good time or not at Christmas. Oh. And it even mm. has Kira Knightley in it, you know, so you're like, mm. well, this is all very Richard Curtis, but with a slightly spiky edge, you know, where everybody's a bit of a <laughs> bastard and you're not supposed to like anybody because they're posh bastards. Um, but then you realise that the premise, you realise quite early, so it's not a spoiler, the premise is that um, thanks to the ecological damage and what we've all done to the environment, a toxic gas is spreading around the world. It's just killed off a bunch of, um, well, pretty much wiped out Africa. And these people gathered for Christmas have about 24 hours before they're all going to die. Um, and it's uh, and it's a fantastic, you know, it's got loads of Christmas stuff. So they're, they're kind of trying to have a force a good time by having the usual desserts and presents, which are all wrapped in newspapers with headlines of, you know, you're all fucked kind of thing. <laughs> and um, 
and there's arguments and there's there's debate about whether you know the government is recommending basically exit pills so because the toxic gas will uh, essentially cause your insides to explode or something the government are recommending that instead you take a euthanasia pill and off yourself before that stage because it's much less uh, painful um so there's debate about that there's some people denying it like with covid um but you have no doubt that this is it you know this is the end there's not going to be any kind of last minute rescue or anything because they are all totally shagged so it's really good and it's also i mean it's played mostly as a black comedy so it's extremely funny while also being as depressing as any film could ever get so yeah and it's a christmas film with Yay. Kira Knightley. With who, the Christmas film with Kira Knightley. You know, who wasn't good for about 20 years, but recently I think has done some really good things, despite being awful in, you know, uh, about 50 other things. Mm. She actually is very good in this. Um, so, yeah, do watch Silent Night. It's, it's you know, especially after it's very, it does play on the COVID thing very much, you know. Um, and uh, And there's some horrible kids in it. And most of the characters are horrible, but you're meant to hate them. So... <laughs> That sounds good. I will look that one up. <laughs> totally sour experience. Watch it on Christmas Yay. Day. Yes. With your nan, even if she's already dead. So, yeah, <laughs> I think that's it. So let's yeah. press on, Sarah. We have a whole year to, uh, well, not the whole year, just movies this year. Horror movies of 2022 is our bag. So uh, the way we're going to do this is uh, we're not going to look at all of them because um, we haven't seen all of them. But we no. are going to pick... It's a little tricky, I think, but we are going to pick our, our f- kind of five favourites of the year. And then we're going to touch on a few others that probably could have any other year, you know, made the top five or things that we also thought were really cool this year. So I think, Sarah, in the absence of the boys who've obviously abandoned us, mm-hmm. like a pair of old whores, we will start with you. So have you, is your top five in order of preference or is it just a bundled fiver? Um, no, it is in order of preference, I think. I worked tirelessly hard on it this afternoon. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> you know, I thought it was going to be a lot easier than it was, but I had to keep, I was like, no, no, I'm just going to have to keep moving them around. I have to keep moving them around. But I think I have kind of come up with a more of a top five rather than just five ones that I can't decide on. <laughs> awesome. So in that case, give us your number five. Okay, my number five is possibly slightly controversial as to whether it is properly horror or not, but it kind of is. Um, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Oh, yeah, yeah, nice. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> That was excellent. my number five. It was going to be higher up, but it did get itself bumped down a bit because it's not actually that horror-y, but it is done by Sam Raimi, and it does have Bruce in it. Those yes. are the exact reasons why chose it but it was good fun um yeah oh, i thought for a marvel movie it it was pretty cool yeah i agree and and let's face it it was well it originally it was done by scott Der- or scott derrickson was going to direct it mm. and it and it all kind of changed from there um dis- uh, what is what do they call it creative differences uh-huh. um there's a really good podcast that interviews him and he's he's very nice about it but basically yeah he developed I mean, it and fell out with marvel essentially uh, but sam raimi stepped in and did a goddamn good job yes it's as near as we're ever going to get to like a 200 million dollar budget evil dead basically isn't it yeah pretty much pretty much and i loved um zombie dr strange he was amazing yes they pushed the envelope i think as to they what did. you can get away with in a 12 yeah. rated big yeah. blockbuster kids love that stuff anyway you know it's um they could have gone further as far as i'm concerned but yeah i love it did you see it at the cinema i did nice yeah yeah how about you what's your number five well my number five is i really struggled with this it's totally <laughs> garbage at this have time. you put yours in like a proper order or is yours more general well, <laughs> well my i say order <laughs> yeah not really i really struggled but yeah so i've got yeah they're not, well they're kind of in an order maybe and they would probably change any day of the week but <laughs> i picked this film called piggy at number five ish Right. I do love Doctor Strange, by the way, and I'm sad I Yay. couldn't put it. I genuinely think it's fantastic. And what? Wait, wait. Bruce in Doctor Strange is Pizza. What's his name? Pizza Popper. 
pizza pop. Is it pizza pop? He stayed for Something the like credits. That. Pop a pizza. Yes. Yeah, pizza pop. I don't know. <laughs> he stayed for the. He's at the very end, and he does it, it. The whole great thing about that is a remake of the Evil Dead severed hand or possessed hand sequence. Isn't yeah. It? <laughs> it's just. I mean, how many people oh, are going to get that? <laughs> yeah, which not is, many, but Sam Raimi, oh, man. Yeah, no. Love him. Any other year, Doctor Strange two would have been, you know, in my top five. Um, yes, uh, Piggy is my number five. Piggy. So okay, this, you know, again is is a fantastic celebration, I suppose, of um, one of the many good horror films this year from a female director. This is a Spanish film that I saw at Fright Fest, mm. and it's really, really good. It really is so good, and there's a there's a poster of it which is which is kind of representative of the movie but at the same time is is deliberately i think misleading so the poster or at least the one i know is the star of it which is uh mm. laura gallan laura gallan she's the star she's the you know titular piggy which is an unflattering name that she's given by the bullies um and she's a, a very overweight teenager and in the poster she's she's not wearing very much and she's covered in blood so straight away and for the first half of the movie you think well you know this is clearly a kind of carry style revenge thing yeah um and it is maybe that in some ways but it does go off in a very different direction thanks to a whole other character that comes into the story that you don't expect which changes everything um but the setup is is kind of carry-ish so she's she's you know obese she lives in this very kind of uh insular spanish community and you can kind of see how it's all gone wrong. Like her mum is really strict, but not very loving. And mum's only kind of help is to say, well, you know, you just need to eat more greens. You know, obviously she's way beyond that because she's she's been allowed to become extremely overweight. And her dad mm. is nice, but seems to be totally oblivious in his nice way to just how cruel people have been to his daughter. So it's it's really tragic. And there's a turning point where she's really humiliated at the local swimming pool and something happens after that, which, you know, would be a, a true spoiler to kind of say what that is. But, yeah, it doesn't go in the direction that you think it goes in. And but it's still it's still a proper horror movie. It's still a real like Carrie. It's a really sympathetic portrait of this character. And the performance by the actress Laura Galan is really fearless, you know, just like Sissy Spacek in Carrie. In this case, obviously, she she is that size in real life. And and what she has to do in the movie is is really impressive in terms of, um, you know, how far she's willing to go to bring this character to life. But it's really powerful. It's quite gruesome. Um, it's shot in the square ratio, you know, rather than mm -hmm. the, the wider thing, which I think really works because she is stuck in this this house, this cramped house with her parents in this very inward looking community and she's kind of lost and and you know she finds an escape but it's it's particularly unconventional um and of course she's terribly bullied so yeah piggy was so impressive and it was, i saw it at fright fest and i i don't know i think it might it seems to me it's a shoe in for like a shudder thing um but you know it's super good i'd say check it out man so um, definitely yeah. That sounds really? awesome. I hope it does come to shudder. Yeah, I think it'd it really does love sound it. like it, yeah, it does sound like something that would. Yeah, with I other think stuff so. that's appeared on there recently and stuff. So hopefully, fingers crossed, it will because that that does sound that sounds really good. Yeah, they're so good at picking up stuff from all over the world, and it kind of when you see something on shudder, you know, I don't know if this has happened much with other kind of streaming things but you think oh well it's probably going to be good then you know it's on shutter um they don't just pick up any old tap um mm. although i do laugh <laughs> I th you message i don't know when it was because i've you know i'm living in a time warp but you messaged me to say uh, you'd started watching dario argento's um dark Glasses, oh god yeah. which, which i kind of enjoyed um and essentially your, your message was, well, ah, fuck that for a game of soldiers. I, I yeah, gave up. I watched I watched 10 minutes of it and now I'm watching something else. <laughs> I don't think I can waste like another 90 minutes of my life watching this. <laughs> oh, I guess it's something you just have to warm up to, but that's just not a great start. <laughs> it's it's not his best, but it is also no. maybe tragically it's not it's far from his worst um okay yeah. but yeah <laughs> but yeah no i kind of get it it wasn't you know it wasn't universally loved at freight fest although there, there is good moments 
Um, if you'd have stuck around, there's good moments. Um, yes. I might have to watch it in like 10 minute <laughs> like segments. Pretend it's a series, a very short yeah. series. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, what's your number four, Sarah? Oh, my number four. My number four is good old Scream. Oh yes, the, yeah, excellent. Yay! Like I say, I, I. To be fair, I've I've not been out and watched an awful lot of like indie stuff, so my list is quite generic, really. But yes, it was Scream. Scream came back to the screens this year. Was this Scream Scream Six? Scream 5. This is effectively five. Scream 5. five. Yeah. Uh, okay, cool. I just, cause, cause it's probably because I keep hearing about Scream 6 now. I'm like, oh my God. Mm. But yay. Yeah. It, was, it was good. I was pleasantly pleasantly surprised. I was, it was another one that I went to the cinema to go and see. Um, I, I was, yeah, like I say, pleasantly surprised um, with how it went. I love Jack Quaid. Oh, me as too. an actor from The Boys and stuff like that. Um, I thought he was brilliant in it. Um, yep. it, it had some annoying moments in that it could have done without, but they were few and far between in the grand scheme of things, you know, compared to how some of the other sequels have been and stuff. I thought this one was pretty cool. Um, mm. They killed off a main character, like finally this yes. time we lost Dewey. Yep. And spoiler alert. Kind of, yeah, sorry, spoiler alert if you haven't watched it. Yeah. That's too bad, um, yep. I mean, Niv, Niv Campbell and um, Courtney Cox were there, but luckily they kind of tried to like phase them out a bit and introduce n- new characters and stuff as the mm. main female characters, which I thought was a good idea. Um, I don't know yeah. how much they're going to be in the next one, possibly even less. Oh, well, no. the next one is just Courtney because Niv, uh, Niv Campbell there was some dispute and she's not going to be I thought I'd had, yeah, I thought I'd had something yeah. about it. One minute she was signed up and then she wasn't. So yeah, yeah. I'm wondering what the next ones were going to be even less of them and more of other people. Mm. Yeah. Which uh, is a good thing. Back. I think he, um, Jenna Ortega is back. I, I don't know much. Else. She's everywhere at the moment, isn't she? She's you know, she seems to have been around for ages, but she was a child actress, wasn't she? Um, mm. And she's only I don't know, like a, a fetus age or something. But yeah, she's yes. Jenna Ortega. I have to say, she's um, in all sorts of things this year and yeah, next year I expect. She is really very good in in Wednesday, the the Netflix series. Uh, in fact, uh, that's good because I didn't think there was much else good about it. But yeah, she's yeah. she's exceptionally good in Wednesday. Um, but yeah, no, yeah, I'm I'm really pleased you picked it, and I I'm kind of mortified I haven't got it in my top five because I really enjoyed it. I was worried about it because I didn't think mm. Scream Three and Scream Four were very good. I thought that was no. you know, where the series was wear, wearing out and and it became another one. You're like, oh great, yeah, yeah that again. Here we go. What do you do? Exactly. And Scream Four I thought was really weak, and um, and like you said, it, it got tedious because there was no sense of real peril because you knew that whatever happened, Dewey could be stabbed in the face and he'd still come back next he'd time. He'd still come back the next one, yeah. But they <laughs> actually... kind of immortal. Yeah. Um, but this was good. This was proper nasty as well. Like the yes. the kid getting the th- the knife in his neck and, it, you know, that whole sequence there and Dewey to be finished off properly. So, you know, yeah. that, well, there's no way there around was... this one. <laughs> He's definitely dead for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it was truly a great idea to get the people, the guys that made Ready or Not to to do this one because it, yeah, it was proper, proper good, scary, gory, funny. I thought it was tremendous. Yeah, really. With good. some with some good twists and yeah. Yes, I, I didn't. I'm, well, I'm I'm crap at guessing twists, but I didn't, Same. I didn't know it was going. When there, it comes to know? scream, I seem to be incredibly stupid. I'm like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> you kind of think you know who the killer is and stuff you, you, you're like right i've got it pegged this time yeah i know it's, it's definitely him and then halfway through you're like no no it's her it's got to be her and then you're like off on another tangent or oh, maybe it's that person and then at the end you're like oh god damn it <laughs> <laughs> yeah totally bonkers. did it to me again had no idea yeah yeah i had no idea either and yeah, it really it worked fun. They totally revived. I'm really excited because the next one is changing things up. It's in Manhattan. You know, they're breaking out of Woodsboro. Um, so I think and 
and obviously the old guard is kind of well it's kind of gone apart from Courtney Cox who's coming back so I yeah. think that's a positive there is only so much you can do with the holdovers you know um and I think it was really touching to see Dewey and uh, Gail and everybody back in the new one but yeah I think it's it is time to move on because otherwise mm. you know you're gonna you have to shoehorn them in even if they're not really a part of the plot without shoehorning them in yeah um, the, was well, it kind of a bit like that with Courtney Cox and Niv Campbell yeah. in this one. Oh, look who showed up it's yes finally <laughs> we must get in touch with the original stars yes um so yeah but but this one did it a really good job one of the best sequels and interestingly i i was at the start of the year i was more excited about halloween ends and i was like wow i can't wait for that and yes. less excited about the new screen because i was like oh, i'm not sure you know mm. it went a bit off the rails but as it turns out although i quite like halloween ends scream was much more satisfying all the way through um i think so yeah a good choice Ooh. a good choice Very um, cool yeah so after much wrestling not the oliver reed by the fireplace kind of wrestling uh number four for me it is really tricky but in the end i went for barbarian um <gasps> which i really like um this is all rim in the way the the model works now this is already on disney plus at least in the uk but uh it had a good cinema run a short one but very successful and i saw this as the closing film well it wasn't quite the closing film it's the last film i saw at fright fest they had one more film after this um and it's really good i mean it's um as we've kind of discussed separately it's a rare example of a modern horror film where the trailer hasn't like jizzed every secret out you know the trailer hasn't blown it all by it's by so telling clever it too much. yeah the posters it re- are great as well you know yeah it, it it's really it's really weird i mean i still think it's a really weird title yes for that kind of film because you're like well, that doesn't seem to have any bearing on any of the vibes i'm getting from this trailer at all it's just like it's just about a house with a weird tunnel in it that's literally yes. the only thing that you glean from the trailer. But it's so yes. much more. So much more. Although, I'm, Sarah, oh, yeah. sorry, you can't you can. spell barbarian without R, B, and B. That's true. That's the only explanation I can... I mean, it's in there. It's, it's, not, <laughs> it's not a complete anagram. I but, haven't you know. looked at that. I not thought about that, yeah, I suppose. Okay, I'll give you that. It, it's a great it's in some ways it's a great title because it tells you nothing and yeah, uh, and you're still none the wiser nothing. afterwards you know, it's nope. um yeah we're just waiting throughout the film when's, when's this barbarian going to turn up <laughs> well it's half past <laughs> nine he's not showed up yeah what's he <laughs> are they running the wrong film nigel <laughs> yes it's so it's, good uh, um it would be criminal to, to give it away here but um because uh, it is i suppose well no bollocks um yes so spoiler alert <laughs> um <laughs> although that said i mean th- there was a lot of um what's the word there was a lot of kind of excitement around it at fright fest because it was it was so unknown you know whereas everything else you know you could you already knew the plot and it could be written on the back of a stamp you know the last film was full which is really good actually two girls stuck up a tower how they get down you know that's the plot of four right which <laughs> sells it short because it's a it's a hand sweatingly intense absolutely <gasps> brilliantly done is it a bit like 40 <laughs> is it 47 or 42 Jesus meters Christ. down or whatever it is is it like Just that but like in the that. other direction i was there yeah exactly Without it's the much shark. higher <laughs> that was low this is high seagulls yeah, no and shark. sharks <laughs> Fuck off, yeah, seagulls. yeah. <laughs> So Fall, you have to watch Fall. I mean, again, I, okay. I'm almost sad that I didn't shove it in my top five because Fall is incredible. I mean, it, it, there's a couple of points where you're like, no. <laughs> but <laughs> I love films there's also, like that. There's also, a, there's also a no moment that cleverly um, makes you go, oh, later on, you're like, oh, okay, huh. yes. That wasn't you being stupid. That was actually me assuming. <laughs> um, so Ooh. you must watch Fall, when, <laughs> like, wherever that is. Seek it out. Um, it should be on a big screen, but I, I, it was the last film for Fest. I couldn't stay, so I only saw it on TV in the end. But Fall is incredible. Um, 
but uh, what was my point? But barbarian. Yes. <laughs> barbarian, yes, barbarian. So yeah, barbarian is fantastic. I mean, so yeah, there was loads of buzz around it at Fright Fest because we knew so little about it, uh, other than like you said, it's called barbarian. Hmm. What does that mean then? Yeah. <laughs> Where is the barbarian? Who is the barbarian? Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and then you the say, oh, it's got um, Bill Skarsgård in it. In that yes. case, I'm interested. And it has this fantastic. Like, he's great. He's great. And yes, and it has this fantastic, I don't know how long, maybe first 40 minutes or so, where it is just him at the Airbnb with this this nice girl that showed up. Oh, we're double booked. He's called, you know? Keith. <laughs> he's called Keith. He's called and Keith. Called Keith. You're, like, just, I think. You're, you're like how you, you, you're like, I'm sure like he's going to be some kind of like creepy weirdo or something with a name like Keith <laughs> and stuff like that. And you just find out that he's literally just a bloke called Keith. <sighs> but the great thing is, uh, playing on our knowledge of Bill Skarsgård's career and yeah. and also this kind of setup, you know, oh, she's on her own, although she's smart, you know, she does everything right, really, generally. Yeah. And and she's, you root for her, which isn't always the case with, you know, no. current horror films. Um, no, she is good. She's a great know, She's very good. But he's cleverly playing it as this <laughs> this kind of nervous Norman Bates-ish type yeah. who could be a total weirdo or yeah. might just be or might just very be insecure, misunderstood yeah has no girlfriend and, you yeah. know um so i think they do a smart thing there and and the cool yeah, thing about the Barry, whole, yes the whole setup in when they first get to the house and he's like no no you sleep in the bed and and then he's just sat there with the he's making her a cup of tea and stuff like yes. that and she's like oh god he's really freaking me out and then he just sits there waiting for her to get out of the bathroom just at the table with the two glasses and the <laughs> bottle of wine and then rattles off this like really weird stuttery story about how he didn't want to open the wine without her and stuff and you're like very i think he's Norman gonna Bates. kill you yeah. very and that's brilliant i mean that to be honest, I could have stayed in that whole sequence longer because it's so clever. It's it's so nervous, and and he's charming but frightening. The whole time you're you like, don't where know. is this going? Yeah. And it's and then brilliant. They, then she finds the room, and oh god, I'm glad. And they flip it. Yeah. So I'm glad I didn't watch this at the cinema. To be fair, Stephen, because I would have shat my pants. <laughs> it is genuinely scary. that to me. That's the shit that scares me. Yeah, sure. The yes, no, I get that. Freaky yeah. rooms and the tunnels the and stuff. Up, the tri- yeah, the, yeah. The videos. Um, the freaking rope in the wall. You're like, don't pull the rope. Why would you do that? And you can see, yeah, I mean, it, it's not out of the bounds of possibility. I mean, it, they, yeah. they make a point of it being set in a, in a you know, once nice part of Detroit, isn't it? Which has gone yeah. to see. Um, That's so well done as well, because she turns up at night. Yeah. And you don't really notice it. And then when she goes out in the day for a job interview, you're like, what the yes. fuck are you? <laughs> and that, yeah, I think that's a genius stroke. Uh, the, the the other genius stroke of it is simply the structure of the film. It, it's basically, it's almost like an anthology film because it's three sections yeah. Yeah. in different time frames um, with Bill Skarsgård, Justin Long and Richard Brake are kind of in their own sections. You know, they, they, mm. they are of their own, they have their own film going on. That just happens to tie back to this house. Um, clever casting of Justin Long as a ship back, you know, because we're, oh, we're used yeah. to him playing really likeable guys in Jeepers Creepers. So he has horror form in that sense. He's he's the hero of Jeepers Creepers. And uh, Richard Brake, who is, is a fantastic presence. And of course, no one ever trusts Richard Brake when he shows no. up, even if he's singing a song, yeah. wearing a pinstripe suit. Um, no one would ever think, well, the f- oh, fuck, Richard Brake's here. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's the thing. I, was, I think I was messaging you when I was watching it going, oh, fuck, Uh-oh. this has happened. Oh, God, that's happened. It's like, oh, no, Richard I'm Brake's off. just turned out. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing can they... go wrong now. Exactly. Jesus Christ. But that's also clever because, you know, we've we've got the traditionally creepy Richard Brake, but we've also got the traditionally creepy uh, Bill Skarsgård. So what yeah. gives, you know, which one? Um yeah, Barbarian, it's great all the way through. I, I particularly love that opening stretch when you know so little because yeah. the tension is off the chain and obviously it has to pay off so they can't keep it a secret. Um, but when they do reveal stuff, it's still, you know, it's disturbing stuff. It's it's icky and uncomfortable with the thing. It flashes thing. back to um, Wreck. It reminds me of Wreck. Wreck is a big influence. Yeah, yeah, Wreck is, was terrifying and, yeah, yeah, definitely. In Up that. in the loft. Yeah, Jesus Christ. <laughs> and the very idea, the, the thing that Richard Brake has been doing <laughs> for some mm. time, 
is is also disturbing and it's the yeah. stuff that keeps you up at night you know so um it's got a great score a, a, a really great score as well i've forgotten who did it which is really annoying there's two films this year that had really creepy uh music scores one was smile and the other was this and jesus yeah really effective but yeah barbarian like you said you would have shot yourself but it yeah. was a, it was a fantastic did, big screen appearance yeah, I did um, shit myself. I feel like I would have embarrassed myself quite a lot had I been <laughs> sat amongst other people rather than sat in my own living room on my own. <laughs> uh, row, row C, yes, unfortunately, has just shit themselves. Yeah, there's a bit of a smell. Clean up on row three. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, fantastic. So, yeah, Barbarian, after much debate, uh, it had to be in the top five somewhere. I didn't know where to put it, to be honest, but it was so uh, good. Um, it will be one... I think we'll look back on and think, oh, yeah. Uh, Sarah, what's your next? Where are we at? Number three. Good God. Number three. Yes, we are at number three. Um, so you very kind of quickly went over this one. But my number three is Halloween Ends. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. That excellent. to me, I I preferred it to Scream. Scream I really enjoyed. Obviously, it's it's still on my list. But Halloween Ends, I really enjoyed it. A, nice. lot, a lot of people didn't, but you really enjoyed it as well, didn't you? I really did. In the did. grand scheme of things, yep. I thought the way that it worked with the 2020 Halloween? Uh, no. 2018, 2021, yeah. and 2022. That's it. Trilogy. Yeah. Yep. yeah, the trilogy. I thought I thought it was um, it worked really, really well, all three together, and I don't believe that he's dead, but it was pretty, <laughs> it was pretty final. I mean, you know, yeah. you got you got you got to enjoy an ending like that. But I'm yes. not convinced that I, I he's ended. End. Yeah, yeah, it was great. <laughs> no, me either. I mean, it, well, it is in the sense of this three, this three are done yes. dusted. You know, Jamie Lee presumably is out, but we said that before with Halloween H two O and Resurrection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um so i i guess it'll come back with a whole new thing and you know michael's still michael but this time it's whatever you know this time it's blah um but yeah i'm glad you liked it because it's really annoying i mean people's biggest criticism of it seems to be well it's not the film that i would have you know it's not the film i no. want to see well no well it's the film i want shit. to see though i i thought that it was something that they thought about and you know rather than yeah. just making it ridiculous and stupid yeah that's that's the kind of thing you want to go and see in a cinema something that's thought about things like that and come up with some it's little different. twists and some little differences yeah okay the so, whole kind of like yeah. psychic link thing was a bit tenuous and a bit dodge but you know it's something different yeah yeah sure yeah liked, exactly i liked the crazy kid that played Corey. i thought he was pretty cool it was very effective yeah and that, yeah, that, I mean, we're that deep into the series that if they'd have done, you know, exactly what people seem to be saying, we wanted this instead. If they'd have done, oh, yeah, he's back. <laughs> Another rampage. She kills him at the end. Then people would go, well, it's the same old shit. But, but they actually tried something different. Yeah. And I loved, I, I, one of my favourite scenes of any film this year was the opening, which was total, it was a total 360 yeah, from how you expect it to open, which had nothing mm. to do with Michael. Michael no. wasn't in it, but you expect him to show up, which is the clever thing. Instead, it was it was a kid being hor dying horribly. And obviously yeah, the thing that sets Corey point. off um, on his kind of psychological breakdown. Um, but that was such a brilliant and bold way of starting it. And to keep Michael off camera or at least not killing anyone until, you know, way over an hour has passed mm. was also a great thing as well. I think, yeah, it made you wait for the stuff that you expected to be happening at the start. And it gave you this whole other story about a disturbed young man in a town. Let's face it, Haddonfield, what it's been through in a town where you're going to get a lot of disturbed people because they've lived through. Well, they're you know, presumably half the town has PTSD because they're either related yeah. to someone that was murdered or you know or know someone that was murdered mm -hmm. um so yeah i think it was kind of this it's not perfect but i think it was kind of a masterstroke to 
to take a different U-turn yeah. while also giving you the big showdown at the end with the procession yeah. and, you know, <laughs> Michael being shoved through the, what was it, industrial shredder or something? <laughs> Pretty much, the, what they used to, like, destroy cars with and stuff. Yeah. Oh, that's, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh he's, he's, he's not dead. <laughs> he's, he's definitely gone through the mincer. He, surely he can't come back from this. It's... <laughs> We'll, we'll probably find out that we're like, oh no, that wasn't him. That was someone else. That was Jeff, the uh, the electrician. Oh, yeah. Oh, fucking Jeff. Oh, Not again. <laughs> that means he's still out there. <laughs> and we've only discovered this the following Halloween. Jumping Josephine. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. No. It's no, silly, it's, uh... but it's good. <laughs> and and that's the thing as as well, isn't it? You know, these these aren't meant to be uh, realistic. There's this. 13 films in or 12 or whatever it is you know with, with 40 <laughs> plus years on yes from a story that john carpenter was the first to admit could be written you know on the back of yeah. your hand man yes. in mask stalks babysitters you know and, yeah <laughs> and they've strung this out for 45 years and yeah, yeah. where the they've given up on friday the 13th and stuff now <laughs> they, they're still trying to like pull this one out <laughs> And hilarious, and it still makes money. You know, it, it, we all want it. We're all guilty of this. We all go and see, oh, there's a new Halloween film out because it's a brand yes. name. You know, it's McDonald's. It's a, it's a brand sure. name like that. But yeah, who wouldn't go and see it? It's, it Friday the 13th comes back, it'll make a fortune, all this stuff. Um, because there's a comfort in knowing that you're going to get what you're going to get. Although yeah. this time they pulled something different out of the bag and uh, um, grumble, grumble, yeah. grumble. A lot of people were angry about it. I can't yeah. fucking win. <laughs> um, but yeah, Halloween Ends was a uh, was a cool um, departure, I think, um, from the uh, you know, from the the usual. Um, number three for me. Well, again, after much debate, uh, <laughs> I picked something maybe out of the ordinary. So I, I chose uh, the Harbinger, which Ooh, okay. is which is a creepy film by Andy Mitten, who who has done some really good films like Yellow Brick Road. And a few years ago, did this this film with called The Witch in the Window, which is quite a quiet film, but has one of the best scares I have seen in recent horror. It has very little in the way of scares as we know it, but it it's such a good moment and it's a creepy film. And The Harbinger is is I think one of a lot of films this year that were clearly <coughs> made in lockdown or made in COVID times because they right. have a small cast or you know, so a lot of horror films this year with a very small cast. A limited setting and you think well yeah it makes sense because you know we're now seeing the films that are being produced when there were restrictions or when we had to have bubbles um yeah. and the harbinger's case it's actually set in covid you know covid is a thing in the story and uh the characters we're seeing are living in an apartment that's in a bubble and it's in new york which was particularly hit by covid um people are wearing masks or refusing to wear masks depending mm -hmm. on their, their standpoint social distancing quarantines worries about loved ones going on ventilators and all that kind of stuff and and it really milks that really effectively i think um and the 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 really creepy idea at the heart of it makes sense as well because there's this basically the harbinger figure is a weird looking kind of figure that seems to be stalking the building dressed somewhere between a kind of bird man and a plague doctor with that plague doctor kind of mask right um and the the concept of it is is he's kind of tricking them tricking the people who are already fragile because they're locked down with a right. few family members or if they're not that lucky locked down alone in this big apartment building he's kind of tricking them by appearing in their dreams as anyone to, to trick them into kind of coming over to his side. And then he he takes them and erases their identity so that nobody else ever remembers they ever existed. Um, and he's such a creepy figure. Um, if you think, you know, if you believe that that's exactly what's happening. Um, in a film that's all about people, I mean, the main character's really sympathetic. She's lucky enough to have a family that she's in this bubble with her dad and her brother. And there's some really nice performances there. Um, with humour as well um, but there's so much dread as well because there's this kind of creepy harbinger figure that seems to be stalking the place and starts popping up in the dreams of the the main character um, it's hard to explain without giving much away and it, and again you know it shouldn't you should see it not knowing much mm. and there's some there's some really good jump scares it does have jump scares and, and I think they're really well timed and 
and it's also just really because the characters are so sympathetic i think you just really engage with them and it has this uh this kind of ending which is such a heartbreaking mm. moment again with to say anything more would give it away but it involves an image that pops up all the way through the film that's something that the the main character uh, has drawn years ago and it ends on such a heartbreaking note when this thing happens you're like oh, oh gosh oh. so yeah harbinger is a really scary film but yeah Ooh. and it really captures the times that we've all obviously lived through and probably oh, yeah in a more pleasant way than some of the people in this film. Um, but yeah, but it also just works as a scary horror film. I hope it gets better seen because it, it's one of those ones that might just disappear. But like the witch in the window, I think it's, yeah, proper scary, creepy thing. So Ooh, there you go. Cool. cool. Next. Nice. OK, next. OK, my number two is a movie that was on Shudder that I think you've seen as well. Um, Glorious. Oh, I love Glorious. Yes, Glorious. <laughs> I love that. That's why it gets to number two. Um, yes. It doesn't say a lot. The title is kind of like Barbarian. doesn't really mean yes. anything to the actual Actually, movie. No. It's nothing to do with the movie. Nothing about the movie is glorious, really. <laughs> um, it's kind of, I suppose it kind of could be considered a similar kind of thing because it is such a small cast Very. to what you were saying about the Harbinger. One setting, yeah, mostly. Pretty much just mostly one setting, one guy <laughs> on screen type thing, another guy in a cubicle. Or is it we a never guy? see. Nobody knows. Exactly. <laughs> it's just be? a figment of his, mag- of his imagination. But it has um, an amazingly brilliant role for um, a guy who I think is has been overlooked a lot in his career is um, Ryan Quantin. He's great. He used to play Jason Stackhouse in True Blood. That's how I know him. Mm. And he was like, you know, a hot guy, but like really stupid. And that's kind of how you kind of saw him after that. But he's gone on to do a couple of little things. You see him appear in a few things, but this one, he's like the main character and he's bloody brilliant. He's great. He is a bit thick still but a little bit of a bimbo but not too bad (laughs) he's made a few mistakes in his life um he's going through a bad time he stops off at a is it just is it a garage or yeah like a rest stop kind of thing yeah Yeah, Yeah, it is like a rest stop type thing goes to use the toilet gets locked in the bathroom um and in the cubicle next to him he hears a voice um, claiming, what is he claiming to be? A god. He's, yeah, yeah, he's he's claiming to be like, um, it's Cthulhu's um, dad, isn't it? He's, he's claiming to be uh, Gatanathoa, I think his name is. Yeah, yeah. He's, <laughs> but even that, he, he corrects him on how to pronounce his name, yeah. his real name. A very yeah, old god. <laughs> a very old god, yeah. It's, it's, it's crazy and silly and gooey and sticky and gory and weird there's like it's it's, the whole thing kind of focuses on the glory hole as well doesn't it hence glorious that's the only explanation right or what's a pun yeah it must be it must be (laughs) but yeah it kind of focuses on this glory hole and you're like i do not want to know what's actually gonna you know this has got to be part of it (laughs) at some point and it kind of does get to that point at one point you're like no but it's hilarious it is that brilliant. moment in particular is hilarious well yeah because there's a point where ryan quantum quite understandably he's given this story <laughs> this story from the which is jk simmons who is the perfect you never see jk simmons but he's the voice of the the stranger next door um the alleged uh, dad of Cthulhu. But there's a point where Ryan Quantum quite, uh, you know, understandably thinks he has to stick his cock through the, the yeah. glory hole because he thinks that the guy next door is saying, well, the only way to avoid all life on Earth being annihilated is... Yeah. And <laughs> doesn't quite find out, well, oh, well, it must be this then. No, no, your yeah. cock means nothing to like, me. <laughs> yeah, what are you doing? <laughs> what is that? I don't want that baby. That's hilarious. He spends yeah. most of the time just in his pants as well, doesn't he? On his own, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just talking to the, yeah. To the glory hole. It is brilliant. I mean, I, I actually wish I should have chosen this for the time. It's always that regret. Because <laughs> I remember how much I enjoyed this. And I didn't know much about it. Again, you go in no. quite, quite dry. Um, 
there's hints early on because you do see some weird shit like you see that weird flower and things like that some very lovecraftian kind of yes cosmic uh horror stuff is is there but otherwise like you like you say you know this this is a guy that's already clearly going through a bad time he's living yeah. in his car and stuff um who uh, possibly is uh, seeing all this uh, although then then there's a twist which which changes everything in terms of who he is doesn't it mm. forget, you know yes, oh, exactly. oh that totally uh, transform mm-hmm. um yeah no it's great very clever cleverly done yeah definitely one of the the most unexpected. and he he is brilliant isn't he i do i do love um ryan quanton he's great he was always a gem in true blood yeah he was always he like was. possibly easy to overlook at how good he was in true blood because of the character he played yeah um and I, i'd forgotten i hadn't i suppose i have seen him in stuff since then but he, i've seen him pop up in a few bits but never has you know this has got to be like one of the most screen times he's got since true blood i think i feel like but yeah. i could well, be he's wrong the star isn't he he's he it's is. almost a one-man show because he yeah. is acting against stuff we either don't see or you know um, it's kind of it's kind of like ryan reynolds in buried but just ridiculously stupid and wearing just pants <laughs> and it does it saves up probably it's madder stuff until the air it gets really gooey and gory at the end doesn't it and then there's a twist and what you think I mean, you do root for him, but then you realise, ah, oh. yes. <laughs> um, wow, well, yeah, that's, he's that shit. Exactly. Uh, yeah, glorious is just it is genuinely glorious, and it's Rebecca. It it's again, it's a female director. It's Rebecca it McEndry. Is. Yeah. Who I remember when she was like a, a reporter for Fangoria, and then she was a part of the. Oh wow. I've forgotten the podcast. Shockwave, shock something. She was part of a podcast, and then. Something you should check out if you haven't. She she co-directed with her husband, I think, uh, a Christmas horror anthology on Shudder called All the Creatures yes. Were Stirring. Have you seen that? Yes. I, I'm not sure if I've seen it, but I've, I've seen it on there now. I remember looking at it going, have I watched this or have I not? She also did um, or had something to do with uh, Tales of Halloween. Did she? Oh, one of them. Yeah. Or yeah. at least one of them. One of the segments. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, she's been around doing stuff. So she's another one of them. I like people that do like the little anthologies and stuff like that. So yeah, I if I, I'm not sure. I can't say for sure. I've definitely seen it or not, but I'm sure as soon as I start watching it, I'll know. But yes, yeah, I keep seeing that bonkers. pop up. Yeah, that's you. When you watch that, you think, oh yeah, you know, it makes sense that she would then do something like Glorious, because uh, it's it's a mixed bag. You know, there's there's some different stories, obviously, but yeah, it's it's also got some some proper uh truly mad moments um, but yeah i'm definitely keen on seeing more of our stuff after glorious that's just brilliant <laughs> really good fun <laughs> yes exactly okay so where Do are we number at? two number, number two. two yes number two okay so i had to choose number two men um uh, which i yeah. mentioned before um <laughs> possibly yeah this is great this was another cinema watch which was truly mind-blowing and this oh, is I alex garland who didn't um, get to see this one oh. i was on my list of ones to watch but i couldn't find it without spending quite a lot of money on it so yeah i probably should have bitten the bullet and just gone you know what i think it's probably worth it but i didn't <laughs> it's well yeah i mean this is another divisive one um I know some people that loved it and I, I think the reaction was kind of mixed because it does invite that kind of reaction. Um, it's Alex Garland, who's been around forever, you know, back in the day, he was the writer of stuff like 28 Days Later and The Beach. And, um, yeah, yes. I thought I recognised his name Danny from Danny Boyle somewhere. stuff, yeah. yeah. Then he did Annihilation and Ex Machina was before that, which is also really, really good. So he does do kind of genre stuff and this this is really kind of pretty audacious at uh, the the high concept really of Rory Kinnear playing almost everybody in the film mm. um is really disorientating and I think I told you before that I didn't realize that until I actually watched the film and then started feeling weird and then figured it out um but it was I think it was in the publicity that he was playing multiple roles so mm-hmm. it wasn't really a mm-hmm. spoiler um but the concept is is quite straightforward like Jesse Buckley um has had some awful thing happen to her Her partner commit suicide after they'd broken up so she gets away by going to this country house where the landlord is this kind of if you've seen the the british league of gentlemen he's kind of like a character from that he's this weird awkward grinning 
Tory <laughs> voting, um, patronising um, chap, very polite, you know, get things done. Typical British landowner. Um, uh, but is extremely patronising to her as as a lady. You know? um, mm. And then from there, it just gets weirder. So she starts getting stalked by this this weird naked guy that shows up in her garden. And the police are not very helpful. Everybody else is a bit sexist or a bit weird. The men in the community, the reverend is a bit horny and strange and misogynist as well. Um, mm -hmm. And then, you know, where it goes from there is is kind of extraordinary. The last half an hour, I mean, yeah, I mean, it just it has this kind of sequence that goes on and on for what seems like an eternity is incredibly gross. There's a really awful graphic kind of bit of bodily mutilation, which which is, again, I don't want to spoil too much. But and then when the thing happens in the last 20 minutes of this very gross thing that kind of repeats itself, you kind of figure out, oh, I get it. That, it all makes sense. The, the thing, <laughs> the thing. And this is why Rory Kinnear is in it so much. Um, oh, okay. Even playing characters in the background of scenes, um, not necessarily adult characters either. And oh, cool. there's, a, okay. there's, a weird, <laughs> there's a weird sense of, well, there's lots of things going on. I mean, the title probably gives away, I mean, a big part of the theme and, and uh, Jessie Buckley's fantastic, really. She, she carries it so well. Um, but you've also got a weird kind of almost Wicker Man-ish vibe about this weird village um, where everybody looks the same. And there's obviously some weird shit going on, as well as mm. the, the very nature of, you know, what the, the main character has been through in regards to men, which manifests itself with all of these different kind of examples of patronising or threatening or ridiculous men that she meets in this community. It's yeah. outstanding. It's really goopy and, and kind of gruesome at the end and throughout. It's just extremely unsettling. And it's also actually really funny. And it's a bit like, a, like I said, like an extreme version of a League of Gentlemen episode that's gone and put his foot through the floor and gone crazy. I that does amazing. sound cool. <laughs> yeah. And like a lot of these things, it's it's in and out, you know, I think most of it in and out like an hour and a half or something. Um, yeah, it's it doesn't have to stay. It's welcome. Even if the last scene, the last kind of the big finale does deliberately, I guess, seem to go. Oh, it's still going go on for ages. Oh, my oh. God. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> and then there's oh, Jesus. Oh, that's happening now. OK. <laughs> so, uh, OK, so, yeah. I will definitely, definitely watch men if you hate it um obviously obviously <laughs> let me know but yeah i mean it's entirely like you know it's entirely possible that it can go either way with that one and i suppose that's the idea but it is i love i love unique. the weird queer quirky weirdness of league of gentlemen and stuff like that so <laughs> yeah you'll get that, that vibe sounds, i think sounds good especially with the landlord character who's the first guy you you meet in the village you know there's a very league of gentlemen sense there that he could be someone played by uh you know one of them guys <laughs> yeah oh excellent oh yes we're at oh. number one sorry number one we're on to number one um so my number one is one that you've already mentioned um oh. barbarian is my number one awesome probably just because i've seen it like recently i i really wanted to go and see it in the cinema i'm glad that i didn't but as soon as you said it's on disney plus i was like right i'm watching it tonight then because i was like i need to, that is one that i need to watch this year because i know it's going to be good i love bill skarsgård yeah having having like richard break and stuff turn up in it as well was was a bonus was a plus but i was like yes. yeah no I, I really need to see it possibly because i have seen it so it's so fresh in my mind it has gone pretty much straight to number one but yeah i just i, I thought that was bloody brilliant that was fantastic because you didn't you went in pretty much blind not knowing what the hell was going on yes the the freaky house the tunnels i, I will probably spoil it for some people now but losing um bill skarsgård quite early on as well mm. kind of kind of like i was just like where the hell is this going then you know the fact that he says someone's bit me and then just get, disappears or gets head smashed against the wall. You're just like, oh, my God. And you're like, right. Well, that was like 
what you thought was going to be one of the main characters. And then yeah. it completely shifts and changes onto somebody else's life. And you're just like, what the actual fuck is going on? Mm. And then when they all get brought back to the house. Yeah. Just like, just please stay away from the creepy house. <laughs> Yeah, no, that was brilliant. That was probably like one of the best films I've seen towards this end of the year, for sure. It's super good, isn't it? Yeah, really good. It's a debut feature, I think. I've already forgotten the director's name, but I think it's his first feature. <clears throat> wow, um, cool. But it, yeah, it's... Um, it's impressive. It's incredibly tense. And all those parts really converge very, very well. Yeah, yeah absolutely And awesome. it just gets icking cringy like the more goes on the weirder it gets which i love mm. yeah it's proper gross isn't it but it, it doesn't overdo stuff it it, no. it knows when to kind of wheel out the the big yeah. scares or the big icky bits mm-hmm. um which is cool nice so choice yeah, that's one. my number one yeah <laughs> It's, it was what really difficult. Thinking? Well, it was really difficult. And in the end, I've gone for probably a controversial one in the sense of it's, well, I think it, it, it counts as a horror film because it sure is disturbing and horrifying. Um, so I've gone for Blonde, which is the, is on Netflix. It premiered on Netflix. This is, okay. this is kind of, I mean, it depends how you look at it. This is effectively a film about Marilyn Monroe. Um, it does have an amazing performance by Anna de Armas as, as Marilyn. But it's also really, as far as I can see, it's it's I mean, it's an interpretation of her life. So it's based on a a book also called Blonde, which is a fictionalized account of her life. So it's a speculation as well as being things that are kind of verified stuff that we know about what happened to Marilyn Monroe. Mm-hmm. And, and the movie is an adaptation of that. And the director is I mean, it's had a lot of mm-hmm. controver- contro- controversy and things about, you know, well, you know, this is playing fast with the loot uh, with fast and loose with the truth and things like that but the director right. is the director has been very open said and give a fuck you know i made this film <laughs> because because you know, i wanted to to tell a story which happens in this case to be about marilyn monroe and why she was dead at the age of 36 you know so he's not saying it's true but it is no. a, it's it's a version of her life that may yeah. well contain a lot of truth and we know kind some of this stuff is true you know yeah kind of like the lords of chaos yes exactly stuff when that came out yeah absolutely which i i really like that as well that's um, brilliant maybe yeah absolutely but that also you know was controversial and some absolutely people hate it. yeah exactly they're like that didn't happen and this didn't happen and mm. that only kind of half happened and he's like well yeah but no but yeah yeah, same here, I think. I mean, this is a brilliantly made film. It, it's extremely long. I mean, uh, I've found a lot of movies this year way too long. But this one, I, you know, never bored. I mean, there's, okay. there's a lot of story to tell. It is over two and a half hours mm. long. However, it's it's absolutely riveting. I mean, it's it's her downfall. You you obviously know how this story ends. You know, yes. you know exactly where this is going. And this is about the darkest film about Hollywood I've ever seen. There's, there's absolutely... What she goes through is extraordinary. And again, we know that some of it is based on real stuff that she went through, mm. uh, how she's exploited by the system, the horror that she went through at home before becoming a star and, and how unhappy she was. And it's it's all about Hollywood as a horror story. And it does contain uh, endless, really, horror elements. I mean, there's a there's a crying baby that she's haunted by inside a chest of drawers that she keeps hearing. Um which is partly from the miscarriage that she suffered. She hears the voice of her own dead babies, the you know the ones that never made it. She mm. starts as she as she declines. She starts seeing people, her supposed loved ones, who actually you know were as guilty as exploiting her as anyone. She starts seeing them with blurred faces, and everything gets all twisted, and it becomes a horror movie. I mean, even things that people. Uh, kind of look back on fondly about Marilyn Monroe's career, like Some Like It Hot, which is one of the most kind of beloved comedies of all time. The premiere of that, when you get to that sequence, she's already pretty much over and she's just surrounded by people that are like a a kind of horror movie mob Mm. just trying to get a photo of her or whatever. It's really uncomfortable and you are just watching someone's downfall. Uh, It has an awful sequence with President Kennedy, which is so uncomfortable it's almost unwatchable 
<laughs> and probably is one of the things that that got people's backs up the most. Um, but ultimately, again, you know, it's about a woman that became very famous and that the industry treated like dirt. And that's why she's dead. Um, and it, I think it works as a horror film because it's one person's mental breakdown over the yeah. course of a few years. And it's just really disturbing. I thought it was amazing. I don't know if I can watch it again without, you know, totally falling apart. But <laughs> but yeah, it's such an uncomfortable watch. And I, I figured when I was watching this, oh yeah, this is like, this has got all the bits from some of my favourite horror films of all time yeah. in terms of the style, which kind of shifts from black and white to colour at different points and how it leaves you really disturbed by the end. Um, but yeah, great. Really fabulous. So yeah. Wow. Cool. I don't know. It's hard to pick a number one though because it's been such a good year, man. <laughs> very it certainly difficult. has. Yeah, very much so. Have you got any extra ones you want to mention? Sure. Yeah. I mean, some of you have mentioned already. Scream could have made it very easily. Glorious, definitely. Um, the Black Phone, I thought, was really, really good. The Black Phone is a real gem. Yeah, that's another one I never got around round to seeing in the end that and nope as well i'm gutted i haven't seen them i will at some point but yeah not this year. yeah sure yeah the black well the black phone i think it's really i mean did really well actually it made a fortune um and based... i never saw smile either so oh yeah all really good you know smile is also i think it's been the biggest of them all that really mm. surprised the uh, you know the old predictions but yeah smile's proper creepy like smile is like the, the i suppose the, the modern day variant of The Ring. It's, the ring, it's yeah. based on a very similar premise. It's very serious, it's very downbeat, and it's similarly about a curse that seems to be leading to this chain of events, and there is a way you can kind of outrun the curse, but it involves doing blah, blah. And mm -hmm. it has a couple of proper creepy sequences. Um, and it doesn't cop out at the end either. It's, yeah, I, I was really impressed by Smile. And The Black Phone, the Black Phone is quite cool because the Black Phone, it, I suppose, taps into the current trend of um, horror stories or genre stories about kids. Although, in this case, it's set in the late 70s. So they're all talking about Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Enter the Dragon and stuff like that. Right. And it plays the setting down. And it's also, although it's quite disturbing because it's about child abductions and Ethan Hawke is really creepy as the as the guy I that's... That about him. Very creepy. Yeah, he's an interesting guy. Yeah, and he does quite a lot of horror films as well. Um, and he's he's great as the kidnapper that goes around in this black van with the black balloons and everything. Um, but the movie's also quite lovely. It's strange to say, but it does have some really kind of. I know you hate kids, but it does have some very mm. likable um, young characters. And I think the idea of these kids being abducted and being able to use the black phone to communicate with the the previous kids who were abducted and killed by this guy is a, is a really interesting idea mm. but i thought that was great yeah definitely check that out um smile is well worth watch fall is inc uh, we've mentioned fall fall yes, is incredible that's on my list. good god <laughs> no nope. nope is a very different film to maybe what people are expecting again it's yeah. hard to say without giving much away but yeah, Nope is an interesting one. It's Jordan Peele. Um, all of his films are different to each other, but this one isn't quite the movie that I guessing people were thinking they would be seeing when they saw the trailer with the, you know, the obvious kind of spaceship arriving and stuff. Yeah. yeah and horses. Does it have a lot of horses in it? It's got, well, it's, yeah, it's like set on a, um, the on setting a is Daniel Kalilia's, um job is he's like, yeah, he runs a ranch where they, train horses for Hollywood movies and TV shows and stuff. And Stephen, the guy from Walking Dead, Stephen Yuen? Yeah, Stephen, Yuen. Stephen Yuen. Yuen. Stephen Yuen uh, has a theme park um, nearby. So Stephen Yuen's character is massively important to the, oh, to the story. I've always thought That's he was a, underrated. He needs to be in more as well, yeah. After he, after Walking Dead, he did Mayhem, didn't he? And oh, there not seen an awful lot There's, um, from him. There's a Korean film called Burning, which apparently he's fantastic in. Oh, cool. Um, but yeah, I haven't seen it. But yeah, I saw um, Mayhem was great. Mm. Yeah, it's it's a good showcase for him too. He's a supporting character, Yay. but his, his character plays a big part in the narrative, especially his his traumatic childhood experience with a, a chimp. 
Awesome. <laughs> Not a spoiler, it's the very first thing. Um, so yeah, See, no I think that story. sounds cool. <laughs> there's a lot going on. There's a lot of yeah. um, strange stuff in, in Nope, and I guess it depends on if you go along with it. I mean, it's um, it's a long movie, uh, but and it has people like Keith David showing up as well, um, and the fantastic Michael Wincott, who I've not seen in a film for ages. I remember Michael Wincott in The Crow being one of my favourite um, oh, actors yeah. back in the day. Yeah, it, I'll be interested to see what you think. Um, another one, which I'm pretty sure you've seen, Sissy, I thought was great. You've seen Sissy, I right? did see Sissy. Yes, I did. Yes. That's yeah, really that cool. Was, yeah, that was... I'd completely forgotten all about that one. I had... Yeah, that was crazy. <laughs> oh, she was, she was brilliant. The, the, Fantastic. The lead character that played Sissy, or Cecilia... Mm. I love her. I think she's great. I need to see her in more stuff because she proper creepy and weird and but also sympathetic and you quite liked her and yeah, that was great. That was a good one. Yeah, entirely. Yeah, I totally agree. Um yeah, that's that's one that I almost put. Speak of no evil. Um mm. I I I really probably should have had an attack. Well, yeah, well Speak No Evil was incredible. I thought Speak No Evil was was one of the, the strongest things I've seen in recent years, which is this so really disturbing. uncomfortable piece. Yeah. Yeah. Incredibly uncomfortable. Um, you know, one of those holiday kind of interactions, I suppose, a couple meets another couple and, oh, yeah, come and stay with us <laughs> mm. next. And, and it has such an extraordinary build up, and it pays off with this really upsetting last half an hour, which just is extraordinary. But I think the build-up is is is, is it's a, just as know, uncomfortable. Disturbing. Yeah, yeah, it's weird. It's because it's it's so real as well. Nothing about it is um, made with effects, or there's no like weird monsters or anything in it. It's completely played completely straight, like yeah. normal people. Yeah, entirely. Yeah, absolutely. And there's a point where because it's it's a Danish couple and, and a Dutch couple, isn't it? And it's mm. the uh, it's the Dutch couple that this nice pair meet on holiday. And there's different points where where the Danish couple quite rightly think something is off. Yeah, but they can't put the finger on it. No. And then it's they... turned around on them because the other guys are like, well, you know, we're doing all this stuff for you. We, you know, we're helping mm. you out and we're giving mm. you this fantastic. But there's all these kind of awful, very small detail, like even when it's established that the wife... Uh, I think it's the Danish wife is a vegetarian. They still keep giving her meat dishes. Yeah, and yeah. Something That's wrong with the kid. Awkward. There's something wrong with the kid. Um, it doesn't really talk very much. Yeah. It makes weird, you know, the the wailing and stuff at night. And he's he's really like the the father of the the day uh, the Dutch father is actually quite scary, isn't he? To the kid, you know, he acts yeah. like he doesn't love the kid at all. You know, the kid is never good enough. He can't dance. He can't do this. Yeah. You know, he doesn't. He seems to be quite severely strict with their kid, whereas the Danish couple are a little bit more lenient. You know, they hug their daughter and um, she has this little pet, like cuddly rabbit that she keeps leaving behind. The father, he'll go oh, anywhere to go and get it for yes. her and that kind of thing. And that's a key plot point, actually, isn't it? The, mm. the rabbit is. Yeah. Because he goes back for that uh, key point, they could have got out of there. Yeah. Um, yeah, they could, but they didn't. It's, and then, it's <laughs> excruciating. Yeah. Like, it's, I was so yeah, traumatised by it. great. Him. But yeah, it's also really disturbing. I, I don't think I could go back and watch it again. Uh, yeah, I have to say, when it came to number one, I, I could either, I had a, I made myself choose, I... I could either pick Blonde or Speak No Evil for number one, but <laughs> I didn't want them both to be in the top five um, <laughs> because both I thought were equally traumatic. Um, so Speak No Evil may be, I may be mm. unfairly lost out, but that's because I put them both in the same category as being uh, ordeal horror is basically mm. what I would call them because yes. it's an ordeal to watch and it should be. Um and to re-watch either of them, I'd have to be in a particularly right frame of mind because they are just genuinely upsetting. Yeah. Speak No Evil goes to a very, well, blonders too, but it goes to such a dark place where 
the thing you want to happen in horror movies that we see all the time of people fighting back in yes. horrifying circles you doesn't are happen. Sh- yeah, and you are shouting it. You really want it in your head. You're just screaming, fight back, do something. Yes. But and then you think, you know, if you were put in that position, would you do the same? Be? Yeah, yeah, because we've, we've all seen Laurie, all these characters like Laurie, you yeah. know, resilient. Yeah, um, and you like to think that you'd be the hero and save the day and at least try, but you don't know. Because they're... When you put in, in that situation, yeah. There's a... The, the great... Maybe it's the bit... I mean, maybe, you know, maybe I should have chosen Speak No Evil instead of Blonde, but... Um, there is that great line in Speak No Evil where <laughs> they do the thing like in The Strangers, you know, why are you doing this to us? And in mm. The Strangers, it's it's the terrifying moment in The Strangers, it's because you were home, you know, <laughs> oh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Which is the, the most chilling line I can remember. But in this, they <laughs> ask the same question to the to the villains, you know, and the response is because you let me, which is, yeah. oh, which is such ah. a, it makes <laughs> sense when you watch it, but it's such a horrifying, you think, yeah, Jesus, and who's to say we wouldn't have done the same thing in that Mm -hmm. situation um so yeah speak no evil is extraordinary there's a movie called soft and quiet which i thought was really extraordinary as well and it's really upsetting too which is also by again by a female director (laughs) and it's the first feature for beth de araujo i don't know if i pronounced that right but it's uh it was inspired by i was reading about this and it was inspired by an incident that happened the same day as the murder of george floyd involving a white oh. woman, a white woman who'd let her dog run free in Central Park, and a, a black guy came along and you know asked her if he if she could put it on the leash, and he she then began accusing him to the police of trying to attack her and threatening her. Um, and the movie Soft and Quiet, it's it's uh it's not on Shutter, I think it's on Prime, but it's this story of um you, you see this kind of ordinary white school teacher woman um going about her business and then she meets up with some other women and then you realize that their gathering of cake and nice things is actually a horrifying meeting of a group of um christian nazis basically you see a swastika on top of the cherry pie Um, (laughs) and you get to hang around with them a bit which is really disturbing um and then soon after that there's a sequence in one of the women works at a shop and there's a sequence involving a uh, another person where they decide to pursue her because she, you know, they, they racially humiliate her in their shop and they decide to follow her home to teach her a lesson. And it ends up with uh, with an extraordinary sequence of, of horror and no, no graphic gore or anything, but a really uncomfortable kind of tense uh, scene of home invasion there's again one of the most uncomfortable things i've seen recently and mm. um and the villains in this are a bunch of you know white american mums and mm. uh, i think that was particularly upsetting um so yeah so uh, soft and quiet is no fun whatsoever but an important story i um i really liked orphan the orphan sequel orphan first kill is fantastic i don't know if you remember orphan it's been a while. <clears throat> yeah, it has been a while. But I've de- definitely not seen this new one, no. The new one's bonkers. I've had a lot of good things, yeah. It's really good. It has no right to be as good as it is. I mean, uh, you know, it's been so long since the original. Um, mm. But it, it's got Julia Stiles in it, who I haven't seen in a film for ages. She was a kind of big deal back in the day in teen comedies and stuff. And uh, she's actually one of the most impressive things about it. And it's really nasty. It's really mean spirited and cynical. And somehow it has the woman that played the child woman in the first one doing the same thing in this. She's still playing whatever she is. You know, it's a prequel as well. She's playing like a nine year old, 10 year old girl or something. And somehow it works. It really works. Okay. And Ju- what happens with Julia Starr's character is a particular reason why Orphan First Kill is is great. Actually, it's it's hilariously nasty and yeah again something you should discover for yourself but surprisingly good i liked um i liked the thai west double bill of x and pearl um which x is the slasher movie set in the 70s and pearl is the prequel featuring the uh the antagonist of x who's an old woman in x but featuring pearl features her as a 
as a young woman in her 20s, desperate to be a dancer and make it in Hollywood and things like that, but living with a kind of scary mum and a very sick dad. And those movies are very different. Pearl is not a slasher film. X is. Is that actually out now? Is Pearl out? Pearl is Pearl is out in America. I, I had a, a like oh, a screener copy. Um, oh, X cool. has been out for a while, hasn't it? But yeah, he's mm. made these things really quickly. So I don't remember actually a time when a, a sequel came out the same year as the the mm. thing that's following. But and he's already working on Maxine, which is the one set later than X. It's the sequel to X with the same character. But Mia Goth is the you know is the star of both of those really she she's totally fantastic especially in pearl which pearl i suppose is barely a horror film i mean it it's certainly not a slasher film like x but it is the origins of that character um yeah i thought they were fun the new hellraiser film sarah have you watched that no i didn't get around to it i'm afraid i'm still keen to watch it though waiting for it to um just pop up on a channel rather than have to pay for it yeah, I I get that it sh- it should be coming at some point. Um, yeah, I, I enjoyed it. I mean, it's I, I didn't think it was fantastic or anything. It does have the best thing about it is is Pinhead, fantastic mm. casting, Lady Pinhead. Yeah, absolutely, and very close. I think to to the kind of images you had when you read the original um, Clive Barker novella, which because Pinhead is this, is this very uh, kind of unique androgynous uh, figure which mm. which clearly she is in in this new version which isn't isn't really a remake it's a kind of thing you know it's a kind of semi sequel thing um and it does have the other cenobites are really good in it as well but the movie is, is a bit draggy it goes it's 2 hours and it mm. and the the main characters stuck in this millionaire's house and getting caught up in the cenobites are a bit of a drag as well so there is a very good performance by the guy that used to be in the ER, Goran Vishnish. I don't know if that's how you say his name. <laughs> <Okay>. Goran Vishnish. <laughs> um, <laughs> he was the Dishy doctor, the, the Dishy Croatian okay. doctor in ER. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's very good as the billionaire and he's in you know, a proper twist. And there's some good gore, practical effects and great design work. But it's just, yeah, it just goes on for a long time. I just thought it could have been much nippier. But Pinhead, fantastic. If you're going to obviously you know we've done the Doug Bradley pinheads but if you're going to recreate pinhead this was the way to do it um and the only other thing I can think of right now Terrify 2 that was really good fun Terrify 2 oh yeah I've had so much so so much stuff about them I haven't seen either of them I'm really behind the times I really should (laughs) because they sound absolutely bonkers and brilliant I think I would probably quite like them so yeah I've heard a lot about Terrify 2 yeah, I mean it's it, well, it's ridiculous. I mean it is. It's two hours and twenty minutes long. Oh, um, okay, jeez. Which nobody knew when well, it's another one I saw <laughs> at Fright Fest. Remember what? No, it's a joke. And it is. It is that long. But somehow, I mean, yeah, it doesn't seem like two two hours and twenty minutes. I I think, I think he assumed that this was his one shot to do a sequel to Terrify, so he put everything into it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, is, um. And it is full of gore. You know, every few minutes there's a spectacular and amazing makeup effect, you know, extended scene of someone having their head bludgeoned or whatever. And the effects are amazing. But there's also a, a really good lead character who's worth rooting for. You know, it's got a really good heroine who you do root for for a change. And, and she's excellent. There's a few things you like. Well, they could have definitely trimmed this dream sequence or this flashback or whatever. But Art the Clown is such a great character and such a nasty character that i think it all somehow works so yeah <laughs> i would i'd say check out both of them when you get a chance because it's entertaining yeah <laughs> and obviously extremely gory excellent so, so there's a bunch what about your have you got any uh didn't quite make it yeah well one that i literally just scribbled on the list when we first started because you mentioned it i was like oh god i forgot that was even out was the new predator movie yes that's yeah that's fun did you like yeah, it yeah it was, it was pretty good yeah considering we hadn't had anything from predator for quite a while i thought mm. that was that was quite a good effort um nothing massive to write home about but there were some good kills and some clever bits and yeah it was quite enjoyable it was good to have the predator back I think so. Yeah, it's it has been a while. Um, 
Yeah, it worked quite well, I think. Stripped down kind of thing. Yeah, for sure. Um, another one I caught recently, which I think you also said that you watched at Fright Fest, was Deadstream. Oh, yeah. That was kind of fun. Kind of yep. better than I thought it was going to be. Hmm. Um, from the description and stuff, I'm, I wasn't sure I was going to like it. Um, but the guy, it, it's another one kind of like Glorious, which is like a very, very stri- stripped down um, cast and stuff. Basically, it's a YouTuber who um, sucks at most things, did a really bad thing, decided he was going to spend the night in a really haunted house. Um, you think it could go one of two ways, but luckily it went the good way. And they kind of like jazzed it up with some weird ghostly kids and some creepy monsters and stuff like that, which was great rather than mm. being something that he's just like, you know, jump scare central and like just screaming at shadows. It actually does stuff. There's quite a lot of action. He's throwing himself out of windows. He's chopping bits of himself off and that kind of stuff. We thought that was actually, it was, it was a lot more fun than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> Yeah, it keeps moving, doesn't it? And, yeah. and it is funny, and he's quite and engaged. I think if you warm is. to him, yeah. I think it works. I, I guess yeah. some people didn't, but I, I thought he was funny. Yeah, I thought he was too. Yeah, he started off like a bit of a twat, but <laughs> he, he kind of likeable twat at the same time. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> yeah, that was good fun, actually. Yeah, and then there's just been a couple of others that I've seen this year that haven't necessarily come out this year um i did have the sadness on my list we were talking about this earlier but it actually you know it actually was released the year before but i didn't actually get to see it until the beginning of this year i think it was like i don't know march april kind of time i think it came onto like shadow or something so i sat and watched that and that was a it's it's another one of those ones kind of like speak no evil i mean it's not real in any sense of the word real but it's disturbing you can't say oh my god it was amazing it's brilliant you're just like that shit me up and creeped me out and there was stuff yeah. going on on screen that you just wouldn't expect to see it was creepy it was gory it was ridiculously violent but at yeah. the same time like you know incredible incredible to watch oh yeah there's some astonishing moments then on the tube and stuff in sure yeah in the sadness that yeah that's amazing I like the sadness a lot. Yeah, the crazy concept, kind of like, kind of like Twenty Eight Days Later on acid. Mm. Yeah, and it goes just taking all the way. it. Yeah, way, way, way further than a lot of other, you know, any like US movie and stuff wouldn't have took it, taken it that far. But these well, ones would. <laughs> I'm amazed that it's well at these days. That's you know, it's on Shudder and stuff. You know, there's no way. Just even maybe twenty years ago, it would never have. It's like oh, oh, I hear um, uh, the um, America are doing a version of the sadness. It's like, oh, well, that's going to be shit, isn't it? Good God! <laughs> exactly. What can they do to improve that? Nothing. It's going to be yeah. rubbish compared to that. Isn't there it? is no mainstream version of it. <laughs> you know, no, it just doesn't work because it is so extraordinary. But it, it it keeps moving. It's so it's so brilliantly made. Yeah, I was really impressed by that. Mm. And another one I saw recently, which is from back even further, I think it's from 2020 or 2019, um, is a film called Run, Sweetheart, Run. Ah, I've not seen that. It's another one of those ones where you you think it's something, but it's not. Mm. And it has um, a really, really great performance. I can't, I, I will probably completely... Um, destroy his name but P- Pilu Aspec hmm. so sorry if I've got that completely wrong but um, he's, <laughs> he's appeared he's appeared in a lot of things as the bad guy um, he was in Overlord as um, how I first <sighs> knew him the crazy German guy in Overlord he's been in Game of Thrones he was in Ghost in the Shell um, he's also recently in The Samaritan with um, Sylvester Stallone which was total shit I think I wasted a <laughs> time that I could have spent watching other movies, watching that. That was absolute shit, but he was he was good. Um, but yeah, he's the, again, plays a kind of like creepy bad guy um, who ends up stalking this woman through the city all night. But that's 
that's about all I kind of want to say without completely ruining it. it has a kind of fantasy element to it um there's a lot of um there's a lot of deaths a lot of killing and a lot of blood mm. from a movie with a title run sweetheart run <laughs> you didn't necessarily <laughs> think it was like it could be like a rom-com or something <laughs> it's kind of what i thought when i first saw it but i was like no nah, I'm, I'm gonna check it out um it's cleverly done i like the way they do um the opening titles and stuff you know the opening titles take a while to get along and, and the title of the movie run sweetheart run is throughout the movie as well it kind of stops and like things flash up on the screen and stuff nice. like that so it's pretty cool but yeah i think that's that's kind of about it for me i wasn't too impressed with x hmm. i didn't really like it very much i thought it was a bit of a pointless film to be fair yeah <laughs> No, that's fair just, enough. Just the kind of whole, like, kind of Texas Chainsaw kind of rip off with the whole blue movie thing. It took way too long to get going. The idea of the old couple was brilliant, and they were creepy, and they were, yeah, strange and odd. But at the same point, I kind of thought that was pretty unrealistic that people mm. that age are going around killing people. I did like the way it started, though, from a kind of Texas Chainsaw kind yep. of opening really with the bodies and stuff to start off with and then it kind of goes back in time but no i wasn't i didn't really like it as one of those films that i was not impressed with yeah that's very it has it's again it's been pretty divisive hasn't it's subjective it? yeah oh uh, yeah yeah of course and i'm and kind pearl of intrigued is, yeah. yeah i'm intrigued about pearl i suppose because she's probably quite an interesting character in the grand scheme of things she's the most interesting character i thought out of the whole of x oh definitely yeah she's fantastic she's she's a very sad character in x i think as much as a warped and obviously psychopathic mm. one um and pearl is very much she's the the hero of of pearl really even though she's already slightly disturbed um yeah. I don't think I'd want to watch Maxine. I don't think I really care what happens to her afterwards. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure how they're going to take. Well, yeah, mm. they're, they're coming out so fast. I guess we'll find out soon. Yeah. Um, it's an interesting series. I, I do like, uh, I mean, it's. I think it's entirely about Mia Goff, who's always been really good. But she's got this this great showcase with this particular character. And she actually co-wrote um, Pearl as well. Um, so I think that's yeah, that's definitely the most interesting thing about it, and some good kills in X. I thought there was, which there yeah. isn't in Pearl. Pearl is much less about the kills, but there is a couple of proper slasher movie kills in the yeah, yeah, there the is. That's one. true. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, I think that's it. Yeah, is there anything you're particularly looking forward to next year? Ah, oh, what is coming out next year? The uh, new well, screen I'm movie. Yeah, I'm particularly keen on Evil Dead Rise. The yes. still talk, I think it's going on, it's happening. It is going to be next year, I hope. Yes. Other than that, that's... I'm not sure what else is coming out. I'm not really up on what is going to be about this year, but that's definitely one I'm looking forward to. Yeah. Whether it'll be at a cinema, I don't know. Well, it's Probably by the not. guy that did um, uh, Hole in the Cap, Hole in the, what the world is that movie called? Hole in the wood. No, that doesn't say it. hole in the floor. <laughs> Definitely a hole. Hole in the ground. Hole in the ground. Yeah, Lee Cronin, right? That's the. Guy that's that it. Did. Yeah, that's a really good film. The hole in the ground. Yeah. Was that in the cinema? I don't know. It, probably not. It was one of those small kind of Irish, um, low key horror films. But yeah, very eerie. Um, yeah, that that one I think has potential. There's a bunch of stuff coming out. There's like a new Saw movie again next year, oh, uh, which I'm always on board for because I always enjoyed those. Um, yeah, those movies. There's there's the weird thing that the Bloomhouse thing in January called Megan with the weird kind of doll thing, you know, like oh, the. Oh okay. Um, oh yes, I think I have. Yeah, I've seen something about that. I yeah. don't think that's something I'm that interested in. No, I mean, I'm intrigued by it, but yeah, you know, I just don't quite know what that bag is about that. But other than that, I'm not totally like you. I'm not really up with mm. the old uh, horror news. Um, well, it's been a it's been a good year, though, this year. Yes, it has. Some real gems. Uh, still traumatised by Speak No Evil yep. and Blonde. 
and, and barbarian, and barbarian. <laughs> <laughs> which is obviously a good thing but yeah loads of other ones as well which which probably will slip under the radar but things like sissy and piggy uh oh yes easy to mix up with the <laughs> yes oh and four yeah four is such a good time in the same way that 37 meters down was you know incredibly intense fall is just wow oh and of course it has wait a minute i forgot his real name negan from walking dead jeffrey <gasps> jeffrey dean morgan Jeff, jeffrey dean morgan oh, well, he has a small, he's in it he has a small role care. in fall but he's he's nice you know he's a good guy in yeah. fall he's like he's a dad figure in fall so he's he, well, it's an important role, actually, but he's, he's not in a huge amount. It's mostly about the two girls that are stuck up a tower because that's their idea of a good time, was climbing up to this rusty old TV tower. <laughs> what could go wrong? Mm. Um, but, yeah, he's yeah he's really lovely in Fall. And the movie is, yeah, check it out. Where it's on. You can rent it at the moment, I think, but I'm sure it'll be free at some point. I will most definitely check it out. I'm it's having a so quick tense. look on the on the old internet to see exactly what is coming out next year and obviously yes it said megan um snowfalls that sounds quite interesting hmm. um and then we have apparently a new teen wolf movie oh really oh god wasn't yeah. that a tv series for about 100 years <laughs> coming out in january Man. a new evil emerging in beacon hills brings old friends and allies back together to fight a deadly enemy what hmm. Oh, an M. Night Shyamalan movie, Knock at the Cabin. It's coming oh, out in February. A, yes, there's a really good trailer for that. That looks really this, creepy. This obviously horrible movie that I keep hearing about that is going to be absolutely awful, Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey, <laughs> is coming out oh, next God. February. Oh, my God. It looks horrendous. Yeah. I don't think I want to see that. I think that will like completely like ruin my childhood memories of Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> oh, there's another one that one of my friends told me about the other day called Cocaine Bear. Oh yes, I have heard of that one. <laughs> well, that's a must. It's basically about a bear that gets itself into like a massive stash of coke and goes on the rampage. So that sounds pretty cool. <laughs> Scream Six. What else? Yeah, well, Ren, oh, Renfield. No, I'm not sure I'm uh, going to like Cage. that. Yeah. Oh, oh yes, I had heard about that. He's always In, fun to watch. Yeah, but him as Renfield, are we sure? He's going to be absolutely bonkers, isn't he? <laughs> it is going to be bonkers. Okay, maybe maybe I am slightly more interested. Think, yeah. Evil Dead, Evil Dead Rise reckons they're going to it's going to premiere in April. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, a Disney's Haunted Mansion. Oh, the Exorcist. I think that's just a, oh, yes. a, because of the 50 years, it's just a re release that's going to do a run of the. Well, they are doing original. a new one. They're, they're doing like a, yeah, they're doing, the guy that did Halloween is doing a new um, Exorcist, oh. like a remake or whatever, yeah. Ooh. Which I'm suspicious about, but we'll yeah. see. Yeah, the rest seem to be kind of like remakey type things that I'm not mm. sure about. But yes, that's a little taster. Wow. Looking forward to Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> not yeah I'm not oh, sure. I've also heard horrible rumours about them doing like other ones as well like Eeyore and stuff after that it's like no you don't you dare <laughs> but it is actually based on Winnie the Pooh I thought it was just some like a slasher movie with a guy wearing a Winnie the Pooh mask they can still call it Winnie the Pooh how do they get around that it's basically like the kind of like there's a little like synopsis here um, Winnie the Pooh and Piglet are not your friends in this slasher movie about the Hundred Acre Wood characters. After Christopher Robin um, leaves his childhood friends to go to college, they feel abandoned and quickly turn murderous. Their rampage hits a new high, though, when Christopher eventually returns to the forest to introduce his friends to the to his old friends to his new wife. I think that's when things go a bit wrong. But what the hell? Have you seen like the what the Winnie what Winnie the Pooh looks like and stuff? It, it does basically just look like a giant man in a mask. <laughs> I think I've seen an image. I just don't um, know how they can get away with it. Surely, no. uh, who owns the rights to that? Did Disney own the rights to that? I'm it's sure AAA they do. Mills, they so. must do. Yeah. Yeah, but that's no. mental. They've obviously got away. Yeah, they can. Of all the things, in fact, I would rather have some kind of generic remake. To be fair, rather than them trying to <laughs> slasherize <laughs> childhood stories 
because they've done the banana splits and things like that, haven't they? Yeah. I guess that's uh, the next niche. Mm. I don't know how I feel about it. Not good. <laughs> yeah, not sure about that. Maybe mm. it should be stopped. Yeah, for sure. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully it'll crash and burn and they won't do another one. Well, there is a, which is out, I guess, now somewhere, but there is like the, I think it's called The Mean One. There is a bad Grinch horror movie, isn't there? Which Ooh, okay. I'm sure it's called The Mean One, which I suppose can get away with it if they don't directly call it The Grinch or something. I'm not mm. sure how it works legally. But yeah, that's another riff on a, a childhood favourite. I'm sure the uh, others will follow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. And, Ina Blyton's class, classics, uh, the B of G <gasps> gone bad. Oh Loads God! Of stuff, isn't there? P- Peter Rabbit going around with a machete, which is bad enough. They've already had James Corden doing oh, the voice for Oh God, him. yeah, he's a monster. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure we'll end up checking them out, like with uh, what was it, Carousel? I still oh, yes. think Carousel too, but Caras- no, Carousel was hilarious. Yes. <laughs> we get More you in like the end. That. Yeah. That was just so funny. Well, yeah. Well, that's it. That's that's the breeze through the year that was 2022, Sarah. Unbelievable. Yeah. It's almost all over. It and is. some classics in there. Some some true great ones. Go watch Barbarian, Speak No Evil, yes. uh, a bunch fall. of others. And <laughs> fall. Yeah, that's fantastic. And that's it for us. Um, do check us out next time in January of 2023. We're going to be going back, turning back the clock. Uh, like Johnny Hates Jazz. We're going to be watching and talking about a movie that turns 60 in 2023. Unbelievable, which is Alfred Hitchcock's The Birds will be the main subject of episode 36 at the back end of January. Yes. Kicking off a new year of stuff and things, of many, many hey. topics that we'll be uh, enjoying a chat about. But until then, Sarah, this is it. This is good night from myself. Yeah, same for me. Have a great Christmas, everybody, and New Year. Drink and be merry. Much merriness. Yes, Merry Christmas, everybody, and we shall hear you and see you in the new year. Yeah. Marvellous. Bye-bye for now. (laughs) Bye-bye.